into the color for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you please stay standing for a moment of silence, remembering those who have given their given their lives overseas and at home. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay. I don't have my agenda up just yet. Dave, what's first on the agenda before I pull this thing up? Uh, Dottie Grover, Director of Cable Services, about the uh, school project. Okay. Actually, we're in public comment? Yes. That is public comment, right? Yeah, there'd be something I'd like to just um, run by the council and see if the chairman would entertain a consensus. Um, with the pending Woodmont project, I was um, wondering if the council would entertain the possibility of um, having the town, uh, asking the town manager to have the town attorney engage in all further meetings. The reasoning behind that is, is um, the discussions that are taking place with the staff, as well as the planning board meetings that are taking place. I uh, want to make sure that the um, planning board gets all of the resources necessary to be able to represent the, uh, the residents and the citizens of the town so that for the first time working through the PUD ordinance, we, uh, we understand it completely, we work through the rules together, and that um, we engage our town attorney to help best represent our citizens, planning board, and staff. And I'd ask if the <coughs> chairman would entertain a consensus from the council to direct the town manager to do so. John, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, I was there at the meeting the other night. I uh, got up and spoke to that. Um, I think it would be a, a very good asset to uh, have at the meetings to protect, uh, to protect us and also to give the folks that are sitting up here and volunteering their time uh, professional opinions if they need it. And uh, there's a lot riding on it. There's, you know, it's a very big development, and uh, I think that would probably be a really good idea. So I can think we could go through and Take a straw poll. Tom, what do you I think? I agree. Okay. Joe? Yeah, I too idea? was at the meeting, and I, I wish that Bart was there many, many times, so uh, I agree. His presence would be very, very helpful to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Mr. Frieda? Uh, as somebody that was there, I'd be, uh, I think would be uh, well served by having our attorney there. Okay. There you have it. So we can direct Dave when he gets back um, to make sure that we do have representation there from the town attorney. Or one of the staff members from the uh, from the firm. So you got it, John. Five zero. So starting uh, the next no, time we have on, yeah. the development at the planning board, that will be uh, one of the things we do. So if you could pass that on, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? That's what I'm doing. Anybody else? No. For now. No, okay. Okay, Dottie, it's all yours. Okay. Um, I wanted to come tonight because, Dottie Grover, Director of Cable Services. Um, I wanted to come tonight because I checked with the um, <coughs> town manager to find out whether or not a check, a check had been cut for the school district yet in the amount of $7,500. And when he told me that he had not done that quite yet, I thought it would be a good idea to come in and give you a little bit of information. Um, I'm looking at order... 2005-13, which is one of the ones where we started giving the $7,500 uh, to the school district as an annual grant that they were to be using for cable-related activities. Um, they could do things like buy cameras for the elementary school kids. Uh, some of those kids do a really great news program. You should watch it. The weather is always good. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, this year, again, there had been the discussion of doing the $7,500. And I'm going to recommend that you give them more than that. The reason being is that in the last several months, um, the relationship between the school district and the um, studio has just really uh, been so positive and so fantastic. And we have a lot more um, information going back and forth and sharing of what's going on. One of my concerns in the past is that we were just handing over $7,500 and never really, really had an accounting of where that was going, if it was really going to cable-related types of things or LEO 21 things or not. This year, I was given um, uh, some information about $8,000 worth of equipment that the school district had no problem justifying to me that they really could use and use well for the schools to put programming on LEO 21. 
And in addition to that, I had a conversation with Andy Corey, the assistant superintendent, about an opportunity that he had to obtain some distance learning um, uh, equipment that is brand new, probably would have sold for about 7,500 or more, and they are able to get it right now for about 5,500 because the district that wanted to use it was unable to fund it. Um, in talking to him about this, we talked about many different ways that this could be cable related, that the community could also benefit from it by um, putting programming over our <coughs> iMac so that, for example, if there's something going on that maybe the high school kids are interested in, uh, it might also be a historical uh, type of discussion that would be of interest to senior citizens. We could use it for them to see an inter it's <coughs> interactive, so it would be really terrific. So. Um, certainly willing to ask any questions, but the total amount that I would um, ask you to authorize a check to the school district for LEO 21 and cable related activities would be 13500 to come out of the um, special revenue fund, uh, the un, not the budget, but out of that fund where it's, where it's usually coming from. And I'm willing to answer any questions you might have about that. Council have any questions for Doug? Yeah. Uh, so you're suggesting it comes out of the uh, the cable funds undesignated fund balance? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's, that's where it. the 7,500 was coming from. Like yeah, well, it comes out yeah. of the budget, but the budget just flows to the bottom line, and, and any ads and deletes come out of the undesignated fund balance. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that's the council's concurrence, then we'll return with an order mm -hmm. at the next meeting to formalize that. What was the amount again? It was 13,500. <coughs> And would this um, would this be applied to expenditures for the uh, the 12 or the 13 budget? It would be paid this year because oh, we haven't given them. It would be to augment the 2012. The one that we're in 2012. Right. Yes, we, we haven't okay. done that for them yet this year. Okay, so then that would come back to us as a resolution. That's correct. Next think, meeting. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Okay. John. Yeah, I'm fine with it. All right, Dottie. You have a consensus. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. So it's a go? It's a go. <laughs> Terrific. I will tell them they'll be thrilled. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're still in public comment. Is there any uh, anything else non-budget related? Well, actually, I had two. Uh, one on the cable. Uh, I think uh, last year the school paid, um, what was the budget item? The school paid 100000 for cable services? Is that well, the, the gist of it is, I think, since we're collecting a fee in town for the cable studio, uh, for the benefit of the town, I'd like to see the cable studio pay the whole thing uh, for the school <coughs> system. Uh, I don't know why we're charging the school system, uh, you know, for all these supplies and extra things. I think <coughs> they should be just part of the cable service for the whole town, um, you know, keep it simple. And the other question I have is for the planning board. Um, I was at that meeting uh, last Wednesday, and I too had a, a kind of puzzled as to why the planning uh, department did not review the Woodmount proposal within the 30 days that the ordinance requires. I kind of find it surprising. I understand they want to have a third party review to kind of double check their stuff, but um, I didn't think the, the lawyer on their side was that unreasonable about it, asking us to follow the ordinance. So I'm just as curious to why the the town, from what was said, I believe, Want me to know? that they did not review the order, they did not review the proposal okay. at all. John has an answer for you. All right, so Martin, what's been explained to us is, and Dave will corral me in if I go in the wrong direction here, is that the applicant asked, we have a standard engineer, Stantec, that yep. reviews all of our plans. Right. The applicant asked to deviate from that plan went to the planning board, requested that we deviate from using Stantec, and that we go out to a, um, by RFP, we get another engineering firm or put it out for bid. Um, because of that process, um, the applicant knew all this. They actually requested it. We needed that time with their understanding that we needed to be able to um, put an RFP together, because that's the way we do business. Mm -hmm. Um, Stantec will probably be one of the people who will bid on that RFP. I don't know if they will or they won't until those things are open, but I would guess they probably would. Yeah. And that once those are opened on January 4th, 
uh, the planning board, the planning staff and the planning board will then make a selection of who that person is, and then all the clocks will start. That's, that's, my, that's my understanding of why things were done that way and we deviated from what your state Well, was. we have Stantec on, on waivers, so to speak, that they review all the plans. Why wouldn't they do that anyway? The, the why, applicant, why, why, don't they, why did the applicant not trust or believe in Stantec since they do everything else? And didn't the town also uh, planning department write the ordinance, the PUD? We went through the planning board, we went through the town council, and the, and the planning department was right there through this whole process of writing the PUD, so I find it kind of odd that they wouldn't understand what was in there. Well, a couple of things on that, um, and thank you for, for, for bringing it all up. What it is is that the applicant came to the planning board and asked the planning board to use a different reviewer. The planning board said, okay, we, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll allow that. It's nothing that was written into the PUD. Um, as you know, since you follow things, Tim Thompson is actually the architect of the yep. PUD and everything. So, and Tim is still having conversations with Andre, and we're making sure that the staff is very clear on what the PUD is doing. Right. You'll also understand, you heard my statement at the beginning, that we've engaged the town attorney as well to make sure right. we're following everything the way that we're supposed to be following it. So I think probably the way we look at it is that this is a learned process. Some people are asking for first things that we haven't seen before. Right. So. Okay. What we do know is, is that we can't just rely on, we have a talented staff, we can't just rely on them right now. This is maybe the largest project in, in um, New Hampshire, well, probably ever. So we want to make sure we do it right. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. Well, I, I understand that my problem is, uh, again, looking forward, uh, we have a thousand acres up at the airport. Uh, every time we have a PUD of over a hundred acres, the potential from the way this process is going. Uh, would every developer request that to have an outside uh, company uh, review the plans? I mean, that's going to run into a lot of extra money. It doesn't run us into any extra oh. money, to be honest, because they pay for the review. Oh, okay. Now, um, now the thing is, is they, they may come and they may re make that request. And a different planning board or the, the same sitting planning board may say, you know, no, we use Stantec, this is what you got to do. I don't know what they're going to do. Okay. But that, that's definitely an option to them. But in this particular case, they said, okay, we'll entertain that. Um, I don't know where they'll wind up at the end it of the didn't RFP. didn't come out like that Wednesday, but. <laughs> well, I heard, you know, I, I, I was in San Diego getting telephone yeah. calls from somebody, oh, so yeah. trying to explain some of this. <laughs> but um, that's my understanding, yeah. okay. Gabe. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, the appli application came in the middle of October. After discussing with staff, they requested uh, a hearing on December 14th. If the town had followed its normal course of review, staff would have had a recommendation on the 14th. Mm -hmm. The applicant uh, requested and the planning board concurred to uh, seek independent proposals for that review, so necessarily that extends the process to accommodate the right. applicant. No, I understand that part. Yeah. My question is, I, th I thought they had the knowledge there. I understand the council's taking it very seriously based on the statement and the, and the consensus we drew earlier is, is that we see this as something that we need to make sure that all boards have what they need, but especially in this case, this, we, we support this board in any way possible to protect this, you know, the citizens' rights in the town and their understanding of you know, all the processes. Because for people like us who don't, for people who don't follow it, we owe them that. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, Andre Guerin, Community Development Director. The only one part that I just want to add to everything you said was actually correct uh, was that um, actually staff did start the review of, of this application, but at the November 2nd, the, um, the board, planning board, opted to move forward with a third party consultant from, uh, to review the application from its inception to its conclusion. Uh, therefore, um, given that the, this uh, third party review will take, uh, basically take control of the application from beginning to end, Therefore, now we would work with the consultant with regard to the review as opposed to have two different reviews for this particular project. <coughs> Hopefully that answers uh, Marty's question. Okay. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very well done as far as describing the situation. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Not budget related. Mr. Chairman, I have one? Sure. Okay. 
I just wanted to uh, just just throw this out there. We uh, had some um, recent news media, uh, and I was uh, incorrectly quoted about uh, Dave being wrong, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I clarified the fact that I never said that Dave was wrong. So, just throw it out there, um, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's it for public comment. Uh, I just was wondering, um, Harry Soros, um, do you guys have a list of what, what order you're going to take the budget in? The budget's next public hearing is opening up. In no, the, I know, but I mean, do you have department? a department by department by department for our edification? Mary, there's uh, a notice right here. On the oh, corner. Okay. It does. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> yes. That's it. Okay. Now we're, we're now out of public comment and going to open up the public hearing. So, can I get a motion to go into public hearing, please? So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second by Council Farrell on um, Council Dolan. And we are now in public hearing. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Chair votes affirmative. 5 0. We are now in public hearing. Okay, so Dave, back to the budget. Yeah, this is the uh, Council's first public hearing on the proposed FY13 town budget. Uh, at your last budget workshop of December 1st, 2011, the council uh, voted to, at this point in the process, present a default budget plus $300,000. Uh, that $300,000 allocated various departments upon my recommendation, which the council, of course, can adjust uh, at the, since that this public hearing is the town council's budget, which ultimately is presented to the voters at the uh, town meeting. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you seek public input uh, on the uh, on the separate articles individually uh, as set forth in the notice. And we have additional copies up here in the corner, uh, should anybody need a copy. Uh, and I would also suggest that you uh, not take public comment on Article 2, which is the highway reconstruction bond, since the council has scheduled a separate public hearing on that issue, and that is scheduled for Wednesday, December 28th at 7 p.m. Okay. All right, Dave. Thank you. All right, then seeing that, we're going to move to uh, Article 3, which is the Expendable Maintenance Trust. Councilor if, Dolan. If I may, I'd make a general comment. Sure. Um, as we begin this process, uh, this, is, this uh, is our first <coughs> meeting where we get to be listeners, uh, where we uh, hear from, the, from you all and the public. And personally, I'd like to hear uh, your suggestions, what to add, what to subtract. Uh, what's important to you in terms of services and what your priorities are because that will help us as we circle back around after hearing you make adjustments uh, to the budget uh, and that will be what gets presented to the deliberative session. So I'm ready to, to listen and uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. Thanks Tom. Okay, so uh, we're at Article 3, Expendable Maintenance Trust. Uh, anybody in the council? <coughs> I'm just going to go to the public? Is that what we're planning on doing? Sure. Why don't we? I, I'd love to hear what they have to say. All right. So Article 2, we're talking expendable maintenance trust. Here. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm not going to speak about this article, although maybe others behind me will. But I'm wondering if after this article is done, you might skip to Article 7, only because there are children in the audience that want to speak to that. And it would behoove us to let them get home before that, you know. I've got no problem so with that, So if you would Council? consider that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. It's yeah. okay with me. We can go there now for all of you. Yep, Mary, if you want to go there, we could do that right now. Well, that's fine. It's up to you. You open nope, up. No, that's okay. That's fine. Trust. It's not a problem. Okay. So we so can we'll do that. Article three in a minute. So we're going to go down to Article 7, the special revenue funds. In that, that is sewer, cable, and the police outside detail. So if you have questions or concerns in regards to anything within what I just said, on Article 7, step right up to the mic. Please give your name and your address. <coughs> Richard Belinsky, 89 Hall Road, Cable Studio. Uh, while I understand what you're trying to do by taking from the undesignated fund balance of the cable studio, I do have a problem with the way it's proposed if it's being done. Every year we have a warrant article at town meeting where we vote in the special revenue funds for sewer, police, and cable. 
And in that, it follows state law that says that any of the unused funds cannot be used for any other purpose unless the legislative body of the town, which is the town council, votes in a, a certain appropriation dollar figure. And that, that dollar figure, if approved, has to be used for something to do with police or, or cable, depending on which special revenue fund you're taking it out of. 31 colon 95C, and I forgot my reading glasses, towns made pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95-D vote to restrict revenues or any portion of revenues from a specific source to, uh, to expenditures for specific purposes. Such revenues and expenditures shall be accounted for in a special revenue fund separate from the general fund. Goes into highway, you know, special funds for a highway, special funds for capital improvement. Uh, section three of that says any surplus in any fund created under, our, uh, under paragraph one or two shall not be deemed part of the general fund accumulated surplus, nor shall any surplus be expended for any purpose or transferred to any appropriation until such time as the legislative body shall have voted to appropriate a specific amount from said fund for a specific purpose related to the purpose or source of the revenue. If you go to the town book and you look at Article 8 from 2000, the warrant for 2011, Article 8 says the same thing. It also says, it gives you the amounts that you're voting into the special revenue funds. In the case of the cable franchise fee, it's $366,657. And if you wanted to ask Dottie, I don't know if, if you could ask Dottie if that is the full 5% that is collected, which I if, believe it is. Is that? No. no. The, the amount, uh, this is the way the process works, is that Richard is right. Once the surplus, re once the revenues reach the sewer, I mean the cable division surplus, then you can only use those funds for cable related purposes. The process which the town uses is that when the funds come through the door from Comcast, a certain percentage goes to the cable division to pay for cable related uh, expenses and a percentage never goes into the cable fund, goes to the general fund to assist with the payment of taxes. So the, the, the 105,000 which, which is the 1.5 percent of the 5 percent franchise <coughs> which Comcast pays goes directly to the, to the general fund. The 3.5% goes into the special revenue fund to pay for that year's operating budget. Okay, and that's where the problem lies. <coughs> if you look at this law, it doesn't say you can split it up. It's supposed to go with those revenues funds collected from whatever source, sewer, cable, police. It's supposed to be directed uh, to this, right to the special revenue fund. What's the citation again? Um, 3195C. <coughs> All right. Also, you've had a warrant I, went, I have this year, of course, you have one from this year in April, March, and the one from the year in each book. It goes back about 10 years. And every year you've had a, an article stating that's what gonna be, that's going to be done. It's going to go into the special revenue fund. You've given the dollar <coughs> amount that people are voting on, that people have voted at town meeting to do it that way. And quite frankly, their vote isn't being taken seriously because if you go to vote to take 105, whatever the numbers are you want to take out for another purpose, you've just done exactly what the people voted not to do. It's not what you're trying to do, it's the way it's being done. To put it into the general fund, to take out of the kitty what you want, and then put it in the special revenue fund, is not what should be done. The state law in your warrant article, you can see that the warrant article was written from the state law. It's almost the same exact wording. So, well, I know it's a source of funding and what you want. I understand what you're trying to do. And I've said this before years ago. Yes, you're the legislative body by our town charter. You have all the powers of the town of the legislative body. But does that mean you're going to ignore the vote the people voted in? If you want to do this, let's do it right. You can go to 39, what's it, 39 colon 3, and you can do an article with 25 signatures and say this is what you want to do and let the people vote. If they vote to do it, fine. 
I think the way you're doing it, in my words, is a backdoor way of doing it. We'll drop it in the fund it shouldn't have hit to begin with, take our 1.5%, and then we'll put the rest of the 3.5% into the cable fund. I think it's wrong. It's been done for years. The other problem with that is, for those of you that have been here long enough, which is most of you, if you go back to when the cable studio was built, because that was being done back then, and I forget the percentages, we didn't have any money in the fund to build a cable studio, and it had to go to a bond. And the bond was 300000 and it went up to three sixty-five, and they took another 35000 If you want, figures are right here from, from 2000. What if, the, what if the, you, the roof goes bad? We just had a roof go bad on the uh, library. Now, the expenditure for that roof should come out of the uh, cable special revenue surplus fund, but if you're going to keep robbing it and there's nothing left, what are you going to pay for that for? Are you going to use that to take it out of the capital improvement maintenance fund? shouldn't have to come out of that. It should come out of this. I don't think it's good planning. I know you're looking for revenue, and I understand that. But the way I'm reading the law, and I've had a few people read it and tell me what they thought, see if they are interpreted the way I am, it doesn't say you can do that. Plus, the people voted on it. When did they do that? When did they vote to restrict the funds to go only into the, the special vote? revenue fund? You have an that's article. An annual, you have that's an, article. an annual vote. So now you got this right. year. And they voted in 2010, and the amount you put for them to vote to go into the special revenue fund was the full anticipated 5% of the cable fees. Not the cable fees less your 100 and whatever you, know, whatever you wanted to take. But aren't they voting on that this coming March? They'll vote to put in 295000 but you've been, you get, you know, to fix the future, you've got to look at what was done in the past. Well, no, I understand and, and that, but, but, that, but, but that's an annual, it's an annual vote. And what I'm asking is, did, did the townspeople vote at some point and say, you will put all cable funds in the special revenue fund? Whether they did or didn't, okay. to me, is irrelevant if you're putting the number that they're voting on as the full well, cable. Well, it was done as a no, resolution. Way, nobody, the nobody ever says the it's the full is, cable is fee. Is that the full cable number? It doesn't matter whether they say it, the number you comes out to the not. full fee. Right. We can go round and round and try to twist this whatever way we want, but the fact is, is the number that was given to the people to vote to put into the cable right. fund, and it's the full 5% of the fees, and to but, pull but it out. Where, where are you seeing that, that it's the full 5%? Dave, is it the, hold on, let's clarification purposes. Is it the full 5? 265. Is that? We, uh, we collect about ninety to $95,000 a quarter. So that's about between three hundred and sixty, three hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. We also receive a, a grant from Comcast as part of the contract, which was negotiated for about twenty to thirty thousand dollars for equipment. Mm -hmm. right. Let me ask a clarifying question: Is the two hundred and sixty-five thousand the three point five percent, or the five percent? It's three point five percent. And let me ask another question: Is that two sixty-five intended for use other anything other than the cable? No, uh, 265 operation. is for the cable division, to operate the cable so, division. So when the people vote on the 265, they can be assured that that 265 they vote on will be used for cable operations. It's for the cable budget, that's correct. Right. Okay. Restricted revenues for established <coughs> special revenue funds say that all the revenues need to go into the fund. It's there. If you guys want to go around it and it's been being circumvented for years in this town, <coughs> be my guest. We'll do a resolution to put them all in there. I think it's poor planning. I'll start the article tonight if I have to, to get the 25 signatures to put the full thing in there. I don't care if you do it. I think it needs to be made clear to the people this is what you're doing. And not play the game, well, how do they know the full number, that number is the full 5% or the 3.5% or whatever percentage you want. They voted on a number in the la last year. They'll vote on another number today. They've known that this was a resolution in place up until last year for the full 5% that went into place in 99 or 2000 for the reason that we didn't have funds to build the cable studio. And here we go again. Make it clear, do it right, have the people vote if they want to do it. Yes, I understand you're the legislative body, but if you've already had people vote, you know, everybody says, why can't we get people to vote? It's kind of one of the reasons you can't get people to vote. They vote on something, and then you do something else anyway. So why bother voting? Well, let me ask it again. So be clear. We're going to ask people to vote to see if they want to put $265,000 into a cable special revenue fund. No, see if they and want to change the 5%. No, we're going to ask them if they want to put 265 in a special revenue fund for cable operations. And I, th I think the intention and the restriction that we're going to fence off that money is that 
all 100 percent of that $265,000 that they're going to vote on will be used for cable operations. I think it's pretty clear. I don't know how more clear we could make it. Okay, so you've the 450,000 that's been taken not going by this in the last five, six years, I'd like to see it put back in the cable fund. Didn't have the right to take it. If you, you know, we want to start doing that, I want my 450 back. Put it back in the cable fund, roughly 450. Well, you know, but be honest, Richard, there's people on, you know, there's people in that have talked about over the last month of take it all. You know, I mean, I'm not and saying that's it's fine. The right. They have the right to do that. Right. But when, when there's been votes or there's been consensus, we've asked the question <coughs> meetings, right. the majority of the people have said they wanted it there. That's why it kept getting changed to the 5%. Right. All I'm saying is, is that is it could be 265 or, or, if, or if this legislative body says that they want it to be zero, it could be zero. You know, I, I understand what you're saying, but what, what I want, want also have understand, I think you understand this, is, is that that can be changed. It can be changed so that it's five percent too. Well, it can be changed. We can do a warrant article yeah. and word it in such that it can browse. never be changed. Okay. If but it why? Passes, why do if that? If it passes, if, if it passes, well, anything is if it passes. Right. So the roof blows off that we don't have the revenues left in the special 30, education, uh, yeah. special yeah. revenue fund for the cable 30, studio. Where's the money going to come from? Now it's going to have to come out of. The Dave, is that, is that is that budgeted? Is that budgeted and covered 30, under the uh, expendable maintenance trust? If there's an emergency in a building, we use our expendable maintenance trust fund. Okay. Well, I spoke to Doherty and asked her about. This specifically, and all the maintenance and what's been done over there has always come out of that fund. Well, but if but if we decide to take it out of the expendable maintenance trust fund to replace the roof, we have the ability to do that. Okay. I think. So am I going to get my but, four but it's fifty? A town, am it's I going to get my four fifty back? The, there's already been taken. It hasn't been taken according to the way you're trying to do it this year. Well, according uh, to what we've been told, okay, and we only know what we've been told is is that we've been given. You know, we've had this reviewed. You brought it up last year. We haven't changed anything from last year. We're doing exactly the same way, so I guess and, and, we're, and we're told, and we're told, that the way we're proceeding is correct. Now, I mean, if we if we need to direct the town manager to ask the town attorney for another legal opinion on it, you know, the chairman can ask us if we'll have a consensus to do that. Do we have a written legal opinion on this? Because you know, like state law is quite clear. I don't know. I mean, I'd be more than happy to ask the chairman to ask for a consensus to have the town attorney take a look at it. I mean, Dave, can you get that for us from Absolutely. Bart? Okay. I mean, I'm Please trying to get that. you an answer. Right. I know <laughs> what you're trying to do. But and then depending on the way that it's being done stinks. And then it depending really on does. that, okay. to, to, Richard's, to Richard's point, hold on, Tom. and to Richard's point, if there's a problem with it, then we'll, we'll rediscuss it. And if we have to, you know, put it before the voters, that's what we'll do. Or if we have to correct it, we'll right. correct I it. I mean, yep. if people vote to put all 5% into the general fund, fine, but that's not what people are under the understanding of. It's been, you know, other than the change you made last year, the majority of the people still think it's the whole thing going in because they said we it was voted on years ago. What What's going on? It needs to be clear. I understand what you're doing. And I have been to meetings before when they've taken the money out and said you shouldn't. And guess what? It got taken out anyway. Mm -hmm. You had no right to take it. And it's about $450,000 over the last 10 years that shouldn't have been touched. But, but Richard, i, I got to say I disagree with you when you say we don't have a right to take it. Even you just said we could put it all in a general fund. I said if the people vote well, to well, do okay. so. If the, if well, no, the, people, the legislative body can do it right now if they decide I know they to. can. But you, when you have a Warren article where people have voted, you could do it for this year. You couldn't do it in the past years because you didn't have the 5% split up 3.5 to 1.5, whatever percentage, mm -hmm. and it still got done. All right? It still got moved, and it should have never got moved in any of those years for anything that was unrelated to the cable studio. It's the same with the police outside detail. It's the same with the sewer. And I don't know if any of that's got moved. I haven't looked at that. Yep. You've asked an interesting question. We're going to try to get so, you an answer. So is, your, so is your disagreement with... It's some procedure. Pri some prior council or, the, or what's before this council this year? It, it does. It, it's the whole way it's being done. You need to make it clear. People still think that's the whole the whole 5%. All right? Okay, we're going to find out. And I'll just say, we'll just get an article out there, do the whole 5 I think it's better that you're up front with people and say, this is what we want to do, this is why, and make sure they understand this. Put it in the article that the full amount is 361, 265, whatever the numbers are. 265 is going to go to the uh, special revenue fund. The rest is going to go into the general fund. So they know this. Well, let's be clear, though. That you're, what you're suggesting is that we're doing something underhanded. And it's been very vocal, very much in the public, in the minutes, in the newspaper, that we're, we are moving 3.5% of revenue 
of those revenues into a special revenue account. It's, it's not, not anything that's happened in the dead of night or after midnight or <coughs> without a meeting. These are all public meetings with public minutes published on our website in the newspaper. There have been articles written about it. And we've had extensive discussions about it. So your suggestion that this is happening in a, some underhanded way or with the public not knowing what we're doing, it, it doesn't hold water. Well, the revenue funds is supposed to, if you have an established special revenue fund, that's where they're supposed I to understand, be doing. That's understand, where they're supposed to be I understand deposited. you, dis you disagree it. with the policy, but, but, it's, but you're, you've gone too far when you suggest that this is something that is being done in an underhanded way it's, or out well, of the public That's my side. opinion and I'm entitled to it. Richard, I, I think the thing where I think town yes. council disagrees with you is it's when it gets in the special revenue account, I think everybody agrees it can only be used for cable funds. But prior to that, it can be used for any purpose. It should be deposited straight into the special revenue but, fund. But the it shouldn't go to one and but, then the other. But actually, Richard, I think the law is clear on that. It can go into the general fund, and it, it doesn't have to go into all in the cable fund. No. We don't pull it out. I mean, I believe that is the legal what, opinion. That, that's, that's, that's the opinion. That, that is the legal received. opinion. Yeah. So w when you sit there and say, you know, that it's got to go in there first, that's just not a correct <laughs> statement. You shouldn't leave that Several out. Several towns do operate. Well, they shouldn't have taken 450,000 out over the last nine years either. But th did. that's why I asked you, Richard, if, if, we, if we voted in the past, if you find something that says that the, it's all supposed to go in there, that's a, that's a different story. Just look at the Warren article. Well, it that's says it every year. No, that, that's not. It's in the not, town book. It isn't me. It's in the town book. I'll leave it at that. Okay. I'll just start an article and get it all for This is ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> It's Wally Vitale, 75 Mammoth Road. Uh, in 2000, the council passed a resolution <laughs> saying that complete 5% will go into the general fund. After that, $40,000 a year was taken out of that fund, which was against the resolution that was passed by the town council up until last year. To, to cover back, back all the $40,000 being taken out, you passed another resolution changing it to 1.5 and 3.5. But what I said, but what happened? What, you know, I don't, doesn't anybody check prior resolutions to make sure that no one is going against the resolution? You're going, you know, as you said, the money doesn't get into the, uh, the special fund. But what's in there now in the special fund, you cannot take out because it won't be used for cable. That's already in the fund, which is exactly what you said. And I think that's you what know, you agree. says if it goes yeah. in, I if 1.5 goes here, 3.5. We, we, we agree with you. But you guys, yeah, last year, 105,000 because you, you passed the re resolution for that. But what about the prior year and the prior year? And the prior year. Well, I wasn't here for that. I know. But <laughs> I'm saying. But I agree with you now. But when council does something, there should be a limitation, a statute of a limitation. If a council passes something, there, you just can't go back the next year because now you've got a new council and there's new thinking. Yeah, you know. No, excuse me. You, you, you know. John, what, don't, don't, one minute. One minute. Okay. What good is to have a council passing its own resolutions when, with, a next council can come in can completely override yeah. unfortunately, that that's resolution. Our, that's our government, unfortunately. Government. That's the way we're laid out. And, when I mean, and, I, and I understand what you're saying. I really do. But, you know, we, we, we have different congresses. We have different presidents, governors, legislative bodies, and they do different things. I don't necessarily agree with a whole bunch of stuff they do, but, they, but they're allowed to. Yes. I, I have a gentleman back here who wants to take $100,000 out, out of the fund for the school. The school's program is completely different. The $8,000 that Dottie gives is for equipment. We don't support the school stuff. We don't support their classes, their shows. One thing that what the school does is that when kids wind up taping the shows, they're getting paid by the school. None of the volunteers on the public side don't get paid, except for the gentleman down here doing the government. They wind up getting paid. So now we're going to take another $100,000 out? 
And the next question comes in is, which we brought up last year, what happens when the FCC decides no more franchise fees? Which they're going to do? Now you have no income. Right now, the studio is 100% paid by franchise fees. Dottie Salvi and Benefits, Drew Salvi and Benefits, Aaron Salvi and Benefits, the electrician, the electricity, the telephone, everything in that building across the street is paid by 85% of the town population. It's a zero impact on the taxes for the town. And last year you were going to get rid of a, a position. <clears throat> Her salary wasn't paid. They wanted $105,000, and that was the easiest way to say, we're going to eliminate a position. Her salary paid, was already paid by the franchise fees. And if you eliminate any more positions, all you're going to get is more money in the reserve fund. But as the state RSA says, once it's in that fund, you only can use it for cable. But as it says, you know, one council does one thing, next it happened to be 10 years different, but you have 10 years. One council decides to make a change. I think the way of, of resolving this 100% is by doing a Warren article. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Um, my name is Logan Wright, 7 Gary Drive. Um, I'm here with the Laundry Access Center. Uh, I just want to say that the Laundry Access Center means everything to me. I have a ton of fun there. Um, it just feels so good to be a part of something. Um, you can go make your own production and put it on TV and be able to say, I did that. Um, Anybody can come make what they want, um, and without Erin, that's close to impossible. Um, she's always very kind and helpful to me and many others. I can name many times where she has been above and beyond. She does so much, having a summer camp, an after-school club, um, even just helping me on school projects. She's always been there for me. Um, uh, there was just one time, this last-minute English project, and. Uh, we got done all in one afternoon. Um, she's very kind, hardworking, and caring. One day I seemed upset in the club, and she called me later that day to make sure everything was okay. Um, I remember first coming here two summers ago um, for the video summer camp and wondering if I would like it or not. Now I love it so much I would like to major in video production. Um, without Aaron, the after school club would be gone, as well as the summer camps. Also, the training, by the way, is which is free and anyone can come in and use, would be a lot more limited. Bankup Pro, green screen, sound, lighting, camcorder, and directing are just a few things you can be trained in. Aaron is also always um, looking for new ideas um, to be Photoshop, you know, stuff like that. Uh, she helps me on different activities like Santa Live for little kids. Um, my cousins just went there the other day and they loved it. Um, okay, how long do you want to take over? Okay. Um, besides, not one penny. Can of we have your name? Can we have your name? Me? Oh, sorry, Alana. Okay. Um, not one penny of the Londonary Access Center is used by tax dollars. So why should you be taking it? If you take away Aaron, you take a lot from the community. So um, a lot of, where you live? Oh, 10 Acorn Drive. Okay, and your last name? Janelle. Okay. You guys did an excellent job, right? Aaron is a valued resource in this community. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say anything about her in any negative way at all. My wife has interacted with her. I know I think a lot of her, and I think she does a great job with you guys. So it was very, um, 
mature and brave of you to come up here in front of all these adults and everything and, and, and speak those words. So Thank I, for one person, appreciate it. Thank you. And from the council. Huh? Is this the first time that you two have testified before a public body like this? Yeah, yeah. it is. A little, a little scary? A little bit. A little yeah, you, bit. Did, you did very you well. You did a great job. You're a, you're a great testament to the local school system and, and to your parents. So congratulations for Thanks. having the courage to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Martin, 182 Pillsbury Road, London, Derry, New Hampshire. Just to the kids, don't w feel bad. They scared me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I fight try, with we'll them try a lot. not to do that tonight. Yeah, I know it's not. All right. um, you know, my, my thought on the public a uh, public access is I've used it. I don't know if any of you folks use it, or if you don't use it, if you don't, don't. You should get involved. Um, if you want to take money from public access, it's the wrong thing to do. For, for one, if I'm a cable. I pay cable, I, my 5% should be going directly to public access. I, I, in no way should that money go anywhere but there. That money is, like the gentleman said before, has nothing to do with taxes, zero. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Why are we touching money and, and, and shifting it somewhere else? Leave it alone. You know, the state is, let's go to the state. The state is notorious for taking money from other funds. I'm an avid fish, fisherman. You'll probably catch me on any lake on any good afternoon or even in a rainy day. And they'll take, they're taking money from the, the fees of uh, paying for my license, and now they're sticking it into general funds. Look how well that's worked out, you know. And, uh, and now the, state, the state's having a problem. The fishing game is having a problem. I'm just using an example. Leave it alone. The money belongs there. It's the cables of people. That's their public access. It's not the town. It's not even the taxpayers. The taxpayers are welcome to use it, obviously, but it's for people who are paying cable funds, 5%. That's got to start. This has got to stop. seems like every year we go through this. Now, if this is for a reason to try to get rid of somebody or get rid of somebody's job who, who, who doesn't even make as much as the, the, most of the head of the apartments around here, stop it. This has got to stop. There's no need for this. It sounds like this is a personal vindictive after the management of public access. That's what I'm getting the feeling of. Mm -hmm. This has to stop. This 5% does not belong to the town's general fund or anywhere. It belongs to public access. Let's leave it there. Thank you. Marion Soares, to Gale Road. Um, I agree that the 5% should stay with the Access Center. I've worked um, for the past nine years at, in the Access Center and as a volunteer. And if it wasn't for the, the people that are working there now and the three jobs that are, that are paid, full-time jobs there now, um, I wouldn't have been able to be supported, nor would any of the shows that I've produced or um, directed <coughs> or um, managed be able to have been supported. I would not have learned how to use the equipment that I've learned how to use. Um, and I know that there are times when I need brush ups and I know that there are times when, um, you know, I'm just at a loss. And if I didn't have that resource there, it would, it would take longer for me to be able to complete what I wanted to complete. I know I asked for a list of the, the duties of each of the people that work in, that, in the Access Center. And in looking them over, I don't see how there's duplicates of duplications of effort. I don't see how if you eliminate one position, somebody else is going to be able to pick up that, that, that work that's involved there. And I believe that uh, the budget can be managed very well by them, um, given the cable access fees that are designated for that purpose, and that no one should be telling them you know how to use that unless it's unless it's obvious that there's something going wrong. When I look at the programming, when I look at the support that I get as a as a townsperson and a, as a user of the cable services, I don't see that happening at all. And so I would appreciate it if you would reconsider um, the way that you are handling this. Um, I have I watched you cut and cut and cut and cut. And I spent um, 40 minutes waiting in line the other day in the town, 
taxpayer's office to get sworn in because there was only one person there, other people had, were out, and that person had to do everybody's job. And I waited in line, you know, just as anybody would do, but the point is there's a point where you have to stop or you're not giving us the value for our tax dollars. And, and I think we've reached that point. And as far as the cable con is concerned, it shouldn't even be, you know, a topic of conversation because there are funds designated directly for that and they should be used directly for that. Thank you. I actually, actually have a question. Um, just, uh, Mary, are you suggesting that um, once uh, the director retires in, say, September, that um, you would like to, us to keep three positions there? I would. Okay, I just want to make sure that was clear. I, I definitely believe that there is work there for three people, that, the, that those three people, those three positions support different parts of the, <coughs> of the needs of that cable system, that cable access center, and I know that should you eliminate a position um, with that retirement, if, should you not replace that person, whatever, however you shift things around, if there were not three people there to handle the workload, it will be a detriment to the people who use the cable access center on a regular basis. And again, you know, I, I buy cable from the town. I look forward for that service. I look to be able to, you know, produce shows when I want to. I look to be able to go get cameras when I need them. And I, I need somebody there to service that. And if I don't, if there are not three people there, that may not be the case. And, I, and I'd be mad. Thank you. Just one Thank clarification. You. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deborah Sullivan. I'm from Derry, 9 St. Charles Street, the cusp of London Derry. Uh, <laughs> Derry. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for your service. Can I, can I ask you to oh, stop for a second? Uh, is there any London Derry residents? You're from Derry, right? I am from London Derry. Oh, you said London I, Derry? I, I thought you said no, Derry. I did say I did say Derry. I oh. said Nine St. Charles Street, which is the cutoff for half Derry, half oh. London Derry. Oh, That's well, fine. I, My okay. bad. I should have said London Derry. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's just, I just that to honesty make sure in me. I'm sorry. Protocol. I just wanted to follow it and make sure that <laughs> okay. London Derry. Thank you. Yeah, Go I'm ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, at first I, I'd like to thank you all for your service, and I'm. Um, I'm here to represent the youth program at LACTV Media Group. Uh, I have two sons in that program, um, and there's a couple of other guys that are not here tonight because they're working on their uh, Eagle Scout, um, you know, their Scout projects and um, their Scout badges and things like that, so they couldn't be here tonight. Um, I wanted to talk about how valuable the program is um, and how important it is that those three people that are running the show right now um, have become to not only my family but to the community and to uh, the many, the many youth, the youth group over at LACTV. Um, you know, people are always talking about programs for their youth. We hear these stories about, you know, the sports um, in Londonderry. It's terrific. We hear about the music program in Londonderry. Well, guess what? We have a gem of a youth program. It's a, it's a LAT, LACTV youth media program, and it's second to none. So anybody who's ever really gone over there and participated or seen it, um, it's an amazing thing. Most of those kids over there are not your run-of-the-mill kind of kids, just like the, 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 the students that you just heard from. They are all, they're members of the band, of the orchestra. Uh, many of them are working on Eagle Scout Scouts, and are, some of them have unbelievable um, skills outside of that. Um, these guys, these kids have a lot of character and a lot of their confidence and their leadership skills are as a direct result of being um, involved in Aaron's project over at LACTV, mm -hmm. including my own sons who started in 
uh, almost, I think it's almost four years ago now. So my sons are ninth and 10th graders at um, London Derry <coughs> High School, and they started um, when Erin was in her first year of LAC TV. Um, because of Erin's programs, um, my sons were able to get jobs um, at Market Basket because they proved that they had some job skills and um, leadership qualities, and I contribute that directly to Erin's great um, direction. Um, my sons have uh, been involved in so many of the community services, volunte volunteering. I mean, how many kids do you know that on a Saturday, on a Saturday afternoon, want to volunteer for something that Erin has got them involved in, or doing public service announcements for um, drug, um, you know, drug-free our drug-free community, uh, promoting all the things that you want your kids to be involved in. And now, here we are, we have a terrific program, the Youth Media Program, which that's right up here. My sons have been in the orchestra since the fourth grade. I cherish that program. My sons have been in the Boy Scouts for a number of years, and I know they'll be Eagle Scouts. I know they will be, and I cherish that program. My sons have been in the LACTV media program, uh, and I cherish that program. I know that my sons, and I know everybody in that program, are going to go places, and it's going to be a direct result of the people in that, that program. And not only that, but those are our future. Those are our youth that are going to be sitting in your seats maybe someday, and that's what we're hoping for. And that's what we, you know, that's what we're trying to do with our kids. So, you know, I just want to stress, you know, um, I know it's tough trying to, uh, you know, balance budgets and things like that. But this, to me, is like a cons uh, it's like a conservation land. You do not want to mess with it. It's growing and growing. I mean, we Erin has to turn people away. She has to do criteria to get people in that program so that she can weed people out. She has to uh, give them tests. She has to, there's so many things that she does that's amazing. Um, my son, sometimes he does the robotics here. You might know him, my son Matt, and he's a terrific kid. I mean, he's got unbelievable skills. And the confidence, mainly directly related to that program. So for all the parents that couldn't be here, there were a number of them, I promised them that I would speak for them and just beseech you to, you know, take a second look, take a second look at this. And I mean, we would we would never think about getting rid of our. I, and I know that this is this is just something that I'm putting it up there with, but our our music program and our LAC TV media program are all a part of our community, and they make us really special. I mean, there's other things too that make us special. Our sports our, um, you know, our community services, our Boy Scouts, I can't say enough about them, and our firefighters, and, you know, I'd like to thank you all for, and your poli the police. I mean, we've, had, we've got an awesome community. I'm just asking you not to mess with LACTV, please, if you could. What, what was your Go name ahead. again? Uh, Deborah Sullivan. Deborah, just, just so you understand, for clarification purposes, we're not asking for Aaron to be removed. The, the, the information that was sent out from cable services is incorrect. We never asked for Evan to be removed. If I wind back to history, last year, the council looked and said, we, we need to eliminate a position, okay, through the town manager's budget, okay? The director came up and said, you know what? Don't eliminate the position. I'm going to retire. We said, okay, we won't eliminate the position. We'll work with you for a year. We came to budget hearings this year. Director said, I didn't say I'm going to retire. I'm not retiring. I can't retire till September. We said, we said, well, we'll work with you till September. Then this whole article comes out and says, here we go again. to getting rid of Aaron. Nobody's getting rid of Aaron. We didn't ask, that, that's not what we said. We said nothing of the sort. We only repeated back what the director told us. 
that's what she told us. I, and I have a transcript of exactly what she said here from the DVD from the cable studio. Okay. So okay. you heard what I said to the kids. And I, I meant and, every word of it. And just to re reiterate, I just, I just want you to know. Okay. That's how we got here. Right, and I would. I would and none say of us think the cable studio well. is a bad place. Right. We, we agree with. We think the things you're saying are positive, and we agree. We didn't say any of that. It wasn't our idea to, idea to tell the director to retire. It's her idea. Right. And I wasn't. And I was saying let's. <laughs> just not so get, you know. I wasn't saying let's not get a, get rid of uh, Aaron. I was saying let's not let's uh, let's keep it all intact. So whatever that means, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but what was sent out was inaccurate. Just so we're clear, what was sent out was is that we want we here we go again. We're trying to eliminate the trainer. No, ma'am. That was completely inaccurate. And so, you're, uh, are you are you are you saying that this program would still be intact, um, I don't, eliminating I, I, anyone? I, I mean, don't. I don't know. I'm I'm not responsible for that area. What we what we asked her, what we asked the director for, based on her promise of saying she would retire is give us a budget with two people and let us take a look at it. To my knowledge, she hasn't submitted one with two people. She's only submitted one with three. That's what we asked for. We asked to submit one with two. It wasn't our idea. She said, I'll retire. Please keep Aaron. We said, okay. That's what happened. And is there a way that we could continue this with three people? Is there I, I, a way? Dave, has she submitted a budget for three, two people yet? What, what Dottie submitted was a list of responsibilities for each of the three people and which ones would be priorities, which ones would, would be so, eliminated. So we've asked her multiple people. times to submit a budget for two people and she hasn't. Right. What, we, what was submitted was a list of responsibilities of the three people currently and which responsibilities in her view would continue with two people, which ones would not continue with two people. Okay, so we never got a budget with two people from the department head that we asked I for. I don't have a money budget, no, but I have a list of responsibilities. Okay, so we're not trying to be hard about this. Just want to put it all out. That, that, that's, that's how we got here. No one, no one thinks that the programs that are being run over there aren't good, that we have a good town, people are good people, they're doing good things. I mean, the kids did a great job. We're going off a... That was her plan. It wasn't mine. It wasn't any of these guys. That was the plan that she gave us said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And so if they came back and said they need the three people, is that not an option? Is that what you're saying? That's a different discussion. That's a oh, different okay. discussion. Okay. We, the discussion we've had on the table since budget time is, is that, you know, I, I'm not retiring. I, I have here where she said she was. But, you know, so we got to get to the bottom of this one way or the other. Okay. But that's, that's, They've done good things there. We, I, I personally agree. I can't speak for anybody else, but I agree. I think they've done good things. I think Aaron's done a good job with the kids. But that's how we got where we are right now. Not what was sent out to you from the cable studio. That isn't what happened. Right, and so I guess with my closing, um, I would just say that, so what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing you say, what I'm hearing you say is that, that um, that as long as that program can function with the amount of people that you're stipulating, um, then that everything will be the same. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? According to the town charter, and we... And we're saying, what, what, can we keep this program as is with the amount of people that we have since it's flowing so nicely? I don't know. Okay. And we don't cross that line on the charter. That's between the town manager <clears> and the <throat> department head. But what we've asked for and have yet to receive is a number budget for two people. So we're not trying to be, we're not trying to be hard about this. We're just, we're, we're asking questions. That's what we're supposed to do. So can we rene renegotiate three people? Well, that's, that's what we're having public okay. hearings here. If we, this is, I guess you could call this, this is one big negotiation. Okay. But then again, we could say that and we could put a budget together that has those people in it. This could go to the deliberative session. And they could say, well, no, you're going to go with this budget, and then we have to, the town manager's already told us, we'd have to cut people. So, but I just want you to have a full slate of the facts. I do. I, I, I have this, I have the slate, I have that. You know, uh, I, don't I, think, I don't think anybody up here thinks that the kids aren't benefiting greatly. And I have a, I have a lot of skills and background in family mediation. This family is really too big for me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But Good for I, you. But I guess, I guess in closing, then what I'm saying is, 
Can we keep the, uh, if, if for me, from my standpoint, let's keep all the people we have there and keep it all as is, okay. if we can, if Thank we you. can. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dottie Grover, Director of Cable Services. I guess I'm um, not used to being put in a position of defending, but I'm going to just take a moment and uh, just um, hopefully be able to explain to you what my perception is of what's gone on in the last six months or so. Um, last year, when uh, we were talking budget things, it came up that um, maybe we should go to a hearing, and I believe, Tom, you're the one who discussed going to a hearing on the, um, the, the decisions that were being considered. We did that, and John, I totally remember that I said that I was planning to retire in 2012. Mm -hmm. I never had a specific date. In the back of my mind, one of my expectations was that it would be between September and December of that month. And I also went back and I read the transcript and then I went back and I watched the video verbatim because I was concerned that I may have in the moment given you incorrect information. I certainly understand how someone listening to that and being and working on a 2012 budget might have made the, drawn the conclusion that I said 2012 and I meant the 2012 budget. And I'm sorry, I was thinking calendar year, not fiscal year, so I do apologize for how that might have misled anybody. It was unintentional, I assure you. Um, as far as uh, whether or not the position is what was being considered and whose position it was, I was called about, you guys usually get your agendas, I think, on Thursday night or Friday. I was called on Tuesday of that week when you got your budget for the first time. And I was told that the amount that was going to be requested was going to be $65,000. And I said, 65000 yes. And is that the position of the trainer? And I was told that it was the position of the trainer. So I have not drawn any conclusions out of the air. That's what I was told at that time. <clears throat> Hold if on that's a second. Not, I'm Hold on. For clarification, the town manager would like to talk. The amount of money taken from the Just budget clarification. was the trainer position. It's been made very clear on numerous occasions okay. that that is not the, necessarily the position that has to be taken out of the budget. The reason the trainer position was selected is that that is the <coughs> least expensive position in the budget, so it would give maximum flexibility with the remaining funds to redefine the other two jobs. So, correct. The training money, the money for the trainer was identified it was made very clear, though, that that, not, that necessarily was not the position to be eliminated. Okay. It was made clear later. It definitely was. I don't disagree with you. But at that conversation that we had, which was pretty brief, because I, I remember telling you that I really could not support that position mm -hmm. I because that. I felt the trainer was an integral part of the facility. Later on, yes, you did say that whatever, amount of, whatever position went, that was the amount of money that you were looking for. That's and you correct. did say that later. Right. But when we started, it was a person. And it has been perceived as a person since because of the dollar amount. You can't get rid of, of my salary for that amount. You can't get rid of the um, uh, public information coordinator, my assistant, with that amount of money. So that has continued. Uh, I think we were very careful when we wrote the newsletter to make sure that people just knew that something was going to be happening at this hearing, at the next hearing, as far as the cable and its budget, and that if they needed to, needed to, wanted to, had an opinion, whatever, that they should step up and have their say. I've never told anybody in my entire life how to vote on something or what to say about something. I don't take free speech just as part of my job. I take it as part of my life. I think it's very important that people always be allowed to speak their piece. I have learned a lot from people that I didn't even like because I was willing to stop and listen and they would say something that was beneficial. Um, th as far as saying that we could get along with two versus three, when Dave asked me for um, a $10,000 reduction in the budget that was currently pending before the board. And I <coughs> moved those numbers around eight ways to Sunday. And no matter what I did, the only thing that would, it would come out as 
is the budget he had submitted minus $10,000. So my response to him was that I had tried a dozen different ways and didn't see anything different and that the $10,000, if he was looking for my um, opinion as to where that could come from, I would suggest taking it out of equipment versus taking anything <coughs> out of personnel. So that was the, the two people versus three people. I also had said last year um, when we were discussing this and discussing my retirement um, that I thought it was only reasonable to keep our minds open to the fact that it could be three people that are needed. So I retire. Very likely that the next person coming in behind me probably wouldn't start at the same rate of pay as I am. Um, so you've got a savings there. And let that new person who is going to be the director look at how things worked and figure out what they thought was best and be willing to listen as to whether or not they needed two people or three people. That's all I asked at that time. And I would still ask that same thing. The retirement thing, I am absolutely retiring in 2012. I don't have a date for you because I have not met with the people that I need to meet with. My first appointment to do that is on January 20th. That was as soon as I could get one. But I promise you that unless it's going to lose me a ton of money, I will retire as soon as I possibly can to leave this open so that the person that is already employed could continue to be employed. You've heard her praises sung here. And I think that not a matter of, you know, I'm not going to lose her. I would be retired. It would be the community that would lose those specific skills, those special <coughs> skills that she has that helps not only the children that, that Ms. Sullivan was just talking about, but also the um, job opportunities kids, the ones that come out of some of our special ed classes. Those kids are doing very well with her too, and those people sing her praises. So that's why I think we need to be, hang on to her, okay? And why maybe I hung on a little, harder than uh, some people expected that I should or would. But I do feel that that's extremely important. I hope that you can understand that this has been my life's work for the last 23, 24 years. And I want to leave it in good condition with the people who remain behind. I don't want to leave them with the problem that they have to overcome. So that's all I have to say. And again, John, I do apologize for leading you astray with the 2012 number. And I will, in 2012, and make that clear, that's the calendar year. If I talk to the retirement people and they say, June 30th is good, then June 30th will be it. And you will be the second to know, right after me. OK? Because <laughs> I am a little tired. So does anybody have any questions? I do, Diane. Okay. Um, understanding your, your, your position here, mm -hmm. what, what I have a question about is how are we supposed to evaluate the budget when you're not submitting to the town manager your proposed budget to three people? I, I mean, did. She didn't submit one for two people. I, I submitted the budget people. to him for three, yes. which is my original budget, which you have in your packets with your early budget lines. And then but the two, my response was that he would just take, he had already done one for two people and that the only change I would make in that, although I didn't agree with the budget per se, the change I would suggest was if another 10,000 had to come off, take it out of the equipment line. Well, and I have, I have, I have honestly always responded. Okay. I've got tons of paper. Well, I, I guess the other question I have is this, since it's your change that now is being accommodated. You mean my retirement? Is yeah, that what you mean? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you looked at anywhere else you could cut? I mean, you have a replacement of equipment, and I don't know what the, the requirements are as mm -hmm. far as legal, because frankly, at this point, because of the change in circumstances, I don't really care about any kind of equipment coming in. I don't care if it's broken. That's 52,000 bucks. Now, I understand from Dave that you might be required by the contract to use some of that money. 28,000 okay. so is, is the number per year that's given for capital equipment. 
Um, prior to this, this uh, last contract, it was 20000 Okay, so that leaves 24000 um, Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but what I'm, what I'm hoping you would come up with is mm -hmm. how you're going to make up this shortfall, at least some way of coming up with it. And, and I think, frankly, it's incumbent upon you since this change is, you know, your change. When you say shortfall, are you saying between Well, if we're going to keep three people, if we're going to keep okay. three people, okay, okay. Yeah. you've got X amount of money. Mm -hmm. And what about you? Come given a first pass at how you're going to mm -hmm. operate. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, here's here's my I, the information that I need. I have approximately three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars plus coming in over the course oh, but of here's twelve another, months. But here's another so parameter. Is that the one hundred four comes. Pardon? You know, the one hundred and four is the other part of the parameter. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to see you work with that. Is that's still coming to the town to the general fund? But it, but it, you it can, can it that can happen with a three-person budget, and 104,000 still going into the general fund. If that's, I know some of the gentlemen brought up some legal issues or whatever, some procedures. But if that turns out to be something that can be done, yeah, that can be done and still not hurt the um, the operating budget and the personnel at at the studio. What can't happen is going forward. On an ongoing basis, if the town continues to take $104,000 and transfer that into the general fund, then we will not only lose the reserve that we have tried to build, we will also end up being in the hole and would have to make tremendous cuts. Well, Do yeah, I understand you wrong? I, I understand that, but mm -hmm. that's, in a sense, next year's problem. Okay. Right now, it's this year's problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. So for this year, you're saying, can I find the 104,000? No, whatever it takes to get a third person on, mm -hmm. to keep the third person. With as long as the town gets the the general fund gets the 104,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I mean, I just think whether it can be done or not, I don't know. But at least I I would hope that you'd try to do that for us, yeah, so that we're looking at a number. I that believe that the budget that I submitted originally would would do that. And the town gets 104,000 mm -hmm. to the general fund. Yeah. Yeah, because I never have looked to the um, reserve. So you pull it out of the a, reserve. That's it would have to come out. Okay, of no, no, that's yes, fine. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but I'm, what I'm my point being that yes, you can do that this year. You can do did it last year, did it the year before. Money has been coming out of that fund, but on an ongoing basis, eventually there's no money to pull from. No, no, I, I understand so, that. Okay. And, you know, and that may be what happens. I hope not. I hope not. I think we do perform a service. I think that most of you are appreciative of the service that we perform. And in fact, you said something at one of the last most recent meetings, Sean, about um, something that had been discussed. It was kind of a hard discussion, but you were glad that it took place in public and that you got to shine the light on it. We're shining the light. <laughs> we're the ones with the cameras that are showing everybody what's going on with their town government. We're the ones that help you establish transparency in what you do. And we're also the ones that are now and can definitely in the future help you with one of your FY13 goals or 12 goals about communication. We're it. We're good at it. We know what we're doing and we'll help you. So but thank you for letting me have my say. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I just want to say that uh, I, it's my hope that your retirement decision, mm -hmm. as well as anybody, any other employee's retirement decision, is based on your decision and not what you perceive uh, the council wanting you to do or anyone else wanting you to do. Mm -hmm. You need to make those decision, that decision what's best for you based on your benefit package and the retirement package that you have. I will have to be practical. Right. So. Uh, if, if there's any perception that mm -hmm. that you're getting squeezed or you're getting shown the door or whatever, I want to I want to put that perception to bed that that's a decision you make privately with your family mm -hmm. uh, at, at, on your own terms, and we'll Puppies deal. Puppies voting for retirement. We'll <laughs> we'll we have to deal with the budget consequences. That's a different right. a different issue. Mm -hmm.
but from a personnel <laughs> policy standpoint, that your retirement decision and the date associated with that is your personal decision. It's not, not really any of our business. I appreciate you saying and I, that. And I also, as the chairman, would like to say that I don't appreciate some of the people's innuendos that have been thrown out here for that. So, oh, about your retirement and being squeezed and pushed out. So, okay. Thank you, Dottie. Thank you. Mike, you are next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike Brown, <coughs> Five Carousel Court. Uh, you actually, uh, I was here to actually just speak about the, the one issue, which was the uh, franchise fee, and it looks like it's parsed off in, into two separate issues, but they're kind of interrelated. Uh, so if you'll bear with me, uh, Dave, relative to the franchise fee, if I'm not mistaken, I know it's a year ago, I believe that you brought forward some detailed information for the then council to take into uh, under advisement uh, relative to uh, what other cable studios do in terms of staffing and in terms of what they do with their franchise fee. That's correct. Can you, without putting you on the spot, can you kind of just summarize, I think what I heard last year, was, which is that some towns take all 5% and put it into the general fund, some take a portion, et cetera. That's right. That varies from community to community. That's right. Correct. And there was no indication that what those other communities were doing was in any way, shape, or form illegal, or there was any problems with doing that. It just appears to have been established that it's done <coughs> elsewhere, and we're doing it here now. Just to be clear, there are no federal or state laws which requires the town to use franchise fee revenues for cable-related pur okay. pur uh, purposes. Okay. So I believe for the counselors who were here last year, as well as myself up there, uh, that was part of the data that we used when we were taking this into, into account. Okay. Whether people believe that that's right or not, that's a personal opinion, but I think it's important to establish that fact for tonight. Uh, I'm a cable user, long, long time cable user. I pay into the fee. And, and I have no, no real issue with uh, the policy makers establishing a certain portion of that fee to be put into the general fund for the benefit of, of uh, reducing the tax rate to me as a taxpayer and anyone else. So I, I'm one cable user that doesn't hold the hard and fast line that every single percent of my fee needs to go to the cable studio. I, I disagree with that completely as a cable user and a taxpayer and someone who's charged that fee. I believe that's a policy decision that you're elected to make. I mean, if we elect you folks to make policy decisions, it's perfectly fine to question those decisions. Uh, that's how govern open government works. Uh, but I don't think you should be accused of doing anything uh, illegal or being uh, accused of anything uh, improper, and I don't think that was the case. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that, that one of the reasons Dave presented in the budget last year uh, some changes in staffing relative to the cable studio is it was a very difficult economic time. It continues to be a very difficult economic time. We can argue that, but I think that's pretty much established. Uh, and he, as the town manager, needed to find some ways to help manage the, the, the goal last year, which was to deliver a flat tax rate to our citizens. Oops. Sorry. Uh, Apologize. Uh, and I, I, I can tell you that, you know, when I was sitting up here, uh, the reason there was a discussion about staffing at the cable studio was directly related to Dave's budget proposal, which was directly related to the goal that we gave him as a council. We wanted to deliver a flat tax. He proposed a budget that did that. It did include some changes to the staffing model at the cable studio. He provided us with data showing that cable studios in other towns, generally speaking, don't have the level of full-time employees we have here. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just a data, a piece of data that needs to be established. But that was part of the thinking. And I, as one member of that council, we were leaning towards agreeing with Dave's changes. We were then presented with a different option by several of the people who were in this room. History is repeating itself tonight. Okay, all I can tell you is it's all about expectations. The expectation 
by three counselors who's still up there and myself who was there was that we agreed to keep the staffing the way it was in lieu of changes that were going to take place in staffing voluntarily for this budget season. So Dave wrote in his budget message for this year, two policy decisions need to be considered by the council. The key is policy decisions. That's what you're elected to do, okay? First, the council approved an FY12 budget with three positions funded with the expectation that staff levels would be reduced to two in FY13 due to retirements. That's what I heard as well. We can talk about the nuances of what was said. It's all about expectations, and I think those expectations were relatively clear that the, the council, then council, was going to agree with Dave's <coughs> changes. We decided not to in lieu of making those changes this year. Okay? It's up to you as policymakers, not me, uh, as to whether you want to move forward with that, make some kind of change, do something different, but it's important to establish that was the expectation. That is true, okay? Whatever you do as a taxpayer and a cable user, I'm not in favor of you uh, increasing the tax rate that I'm going to pay by making any additional, uh, putting money back into the cable reserve fund. I want you to move forward with the 1.5 percent that they're proposing. I don't want that 0.03 percent put back into my tax rate. So whatever you come up with, I don't want to. I don't want it affecting my tax rate. And whatever you do come up with, I'll support because I elected you to make policy decisions, and I'd be fine with whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Sorry about that. It's the end of the quarter in the software business, and the other people. Before, Patrick, yes. before you speak, uh, Pasquale, I'm sorry. I want to have other people that haven't been to the mic already. Okay. Please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yep. make a comment. Yep. Just, just so I, I know that this is a, an emotional discussion as part of the budget, but just to put it in perspective, um, uh, this is a $265,000 line item, and there's still another $26 million on the table. So I, I guess I would encourage us, as, we, as I'm looking at the clock, that at some point in time, uh, we give the public an opportunity to expand the discussion to the to the other 99 percent of the budget that we're considering. I think we have one more public hearing. Was it the 12th day? Our next public hearing is the 12th, I believe. January 12th. That's correct. So we have time with another meeting, but uh, we certainly don't want to get just through one percent of the budget here. Uh, so, I, so what do you what do you want to put a cap on? I, I guess I should. I think we should give people an opportunity to speak, but I'm just saying that that there's 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 a lot more budget to consider, I and so I would encourage people to maybe expand their perspective a little bit. And as I'd like to hear about, continue to hear about this, but I'd like to hear about the what people's thoughts are about the uh, the other line items in the budget as well before we run out of time. I didn't no no offense and. I'm very interested to hear what Thanks you Thanks a say. lot, Tom. Put me <laughs> on the spot. I really appreciate that. No. My name is Cindy Eaton, 16 Clark Road. Um, I guess I had to, I have to say this, uh, this much. Uh, I'm a taxpayer as well as uh, Mike Brown is. And I do want, and I'm a cable user. I pay the fee. And I do want my cable fee, the, all, the whole 5% of it, to go to the cable access department. I don't want everyone else benefiting from the fee that I pay. And that's what happens. Um, other, you know, it's kind of like um, a double tax. Um, and. We went through this last year. I'll try and make it brief. We went through this last year. We went through this whole process. Uh, I thought that it was for one year, and I don't understand what happened. Um, you had a resolution that you voted on, and I believe that resolution was for one year to take the 105 or 104, whatever it was. And that year isn't up yet. So why are we talking about this? We're working on the 2013 budget. 
okay, but we still said one year. So. Dave, what did the exact language? I believe that it was for that year, and then we, we, we would revisit it yearly. The, the resolution f was for FY12 only, which can be revisited at any time. The reason it's back on the table now is we're discussing the FY13 budget. So are you planning on uh, making that resolution again for, the thir for 2013? I don't think it's a plan, but it's a possibility. It, it sounds like you are. If this is well, it, it could be for two and a half. Budget. It could be for two and a half percent. It could be for one percent. It could be for five percent. That's what we're, that's what we're working through, trying to figure out where the money's going to come from to pay for everything. Okay, but you know it's confusing when you say that it was for one year, and suddenly the next year, and. Um, how am I to know that it might go on and on and on? Um, and there goes the cable fee. Uh, there goes the cable access department because there's no more money to uh, keep it running. But that's not what you. that's not really what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is the fact that eight years ago, <clears throat> three people were hired or a third person, I should say, was hired for the studio. And it sounds to me like <laughs> the studio is booming and we do, we do need three people. For eight years, we've needed three people. And it sounds like we could even use um, three and a half people, actually with all the uh, things that are happening in the studio. And I would like you to go over to the studio sometime and volunteer and see what goes on there, to see what the director of the facility does, what the trainer does, what the technology person does. And it is a very special facility because it deals with volunteers. So when a volunteer walks in the door, you can't just say, oh, hi, you know, there's the equipment, go to it. Um, you need someone, the director, to sit down with that person and explain what this is all about and uh, then get them trained. And if they want to know some, some things about technology, there's a technology person there as well. Although I know that he does mostly programming and keeps the um, website and the online stream going. So I'm asking that you keep three positions in that, in the budget. Um, yes, I don't like having my taxes go up, but I also don't want my franchise fees being used elsewhere. I want them for the whole 5%. And just to give you some history, we did take 5% of that for many, many years. It's just been over the past four years that I'm aware of uh, that it, it's been cut to three and a half. So I know it's hard times, but if we keep doing this, we're going to lose something that <laughs> Londonderry should be proud of. Thank you. Question. So, so, hold on a second. Yeah. Go. Go. No, I, never mind. Okay. Yeah. I, I just had a, just my own curiosity, hypothetically, if we walked over right now and boarded up the cable center and shut it down, would we still get a franchise fee? That's correct. Yes. It, I think the other interesting thing, Tom, we worked out last year was is taking a one and a half percent over like a ten year period, we still had money. And if we took two and a half percent and dropped two bodies, we still had money. And we ran all that math and everything last year. And the same argument can be made that we've, we've heard multiple times. We have the same number of police officers as we did in 1989. We have the same number of firemen. We have the same number of DPW people. 
Dave prepared a, um, I asked him to prepare something that we'll probably need here at some point. Of, we're, we're down how many town employees we have over the last 10 years. We're not up, we're down. So we have three people run the planning department. Just so we get a little perspective. Just my other part of that is, of course, is, you know, I don't know. If, if I don't have cable, I could still go use the access center, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you Google cable access fees, a, a lot of portions of the country talk about it as right-of-way fees, not as yeah, franchise they're fees. They're renting the lines to get the cable to their customers. So some, some have made arguments that, that you know, it pays for the right-of-way for cable to get to your house, and that that's town right-of-way. So th there's been arguments made in multiple directions. And that's not like a forever thing. There's so many years, and then you have to renegotiate the fee, right? I believe that's correct. So if we got no fee, how would we fund the cable center? With tax tax dollars. Taxes. Well, the taxes are going to go up anyway if you put the $100,000 back. Dave, that fee, um, wasn't it also part of Comcast's agreement as to being the only game in town? Well, no. The, you, state law prohibits an exclusive contract, but realistically, you will not find another cable company will come in under our density and cable over Comcast to provide a, uh, a competing service. It's just it's not economically justifiable. It just doesn't work. So in essence, in essence, it is an exclusive contract, but it can't be by the letter, by the letter of the law. Okay. Uh, I think Marty. <coughs> yep, come on up, Marty. Martin Suga, 17 Wimbledon Drive. Uh, this is a classic uh, case of wants versus needs. Uh, I think we've seen in the budget hearings before, the town has made it very clear it wants a fully staffed police department, a fire department, and the roads working. And it's nice to have a cable studio, but not, you know, it's not necessary. It's nice that the, you know, the <coughs> kids in the schools are learning how to run cable operations and stuff like that. But is that the core mission of the school? Uh, to a certain extent it is, but again, it's, it's on the outside fringes the, the, of, a, of a core curriculum. Uh, I think we need to look at, uh, you know, the whole picture in the town. If, the fee, if that fee goes back into the cable studio, that means the tax rate goes up. And it's not just going up for the two income earners in this town goes up for the elderly, it goes up for the one income earner, it goes up for the blue collar. You can't forget these people who are on fixed incomes and can't always take this big hike in fees all the time every year, year after year. And, and one of the questions I have is, if we say we keep the funds into the cable fund and every year they don't spend the entire amount, if it goes into the undesignated fund how high can that fund go? There's no limit by state law. So it can go up to a million, two million dollars, then what? What can you do with it? You can use it for, uh, like, like Richard said, once it goes into the special revenue fund, you can only expend that on the purpose for which it was deposited into the fund, so for cable purposes. So can, you can have the Taj Mahal of cable. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Is the, uh, are we building an NBC studio here? I mean, come on, let's be realistic. Uh, the cable studio can't even give me a realistic number of how many people view the channels every night. I'm kind of surprised they didn't put that into the cable uh, agreement on what the, uh, what the ratings are. Uh, considering that we have five channels, which is much more than most towns, and, and most towns, from what I remember last year, have two people in the cable operations. So I, I think, again, this is a want not necessarily that we have to staff fully, and I think we need to take care, look at the bigger picture. Uh, as I drive to work, I still see homes in foreclosure. I still see homes for sale. I see businesses empty in town. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, you know, again, as I said before, um, I didn't get a pay raise. Now this is the fourth year, going over the last six, eight years. Um, 
Yeah. You know, it, it has to end. These are difficult decisions, but they have to be made, and somewhere along the way, we have to hold the line to the spending and say, I'm sorry, but we can't do any more. Uh, but I think that's, uh, to me, that's the bottom line. And as a full disclosure, uh, I'm a satellite TV viewer, so I don't pay the franchise fee. But like five, but you can use the cable set. Thirty percent, even less. So if you get a hundred dollar cable, that's okay. One last thing, we're going to move on. So it'll be thirty dollars in cable. Nine bucks for every Sorry. taxpayer. Sorry, the Swally by Tally seventy-five member throat. I have two things to say, two question. One. Mike Brown mentioned the fact that last year they went through and see which towns had what, which had cable fees, which has nothing. Londonderry, the town of Londonderry has the best cable franchise in the country. I know, because for two years I went, I went to California for a conference. Everybody was surprised, and that was four years ago. Everybody was surprised what this town does. Then the following year, I went to Tampa. And again, they were surprised what we do. We have the best running, including Massachusetts. We were up in Maine at another conference, and they also made the comments about we're better than Massachusetts, we're better than Maine, we're better than Vermont, and we're better than uh, New York. I checked New York because I was going to move to New York, and I checked for the cable. They have cable services there, but no volunteers. All they put on is gem shows for selling gems, government shows, and that's basically it. There's no public service. And reason why we have the best, we hire the good people, but we have the money to use. Now the next thing I was was saying was was going to say. Article seven. Article seven is self-funding funds. The sewer. Everybody who has sewer pays it in their monthly sewer charges. Police outside detail and they work. Pleasure. Thank you. The money goes in that fund and they pay the police. No tax impact on, on the town whatsoever. Same way with the cable division. Now, Dave asked Dottie to cut $10,000 out of her budget. Where's that $10,000 going, Dave? Back into the reserve fund? Back into the reserve fund? I asked, well, where's where that $10,000 going? If the budget is, is reduced by $10,000, Okay, that's entirely separate from the process of where the franchise fees are allocated. If there are funds left over in the cable division budget at the end of the year, that goes into the special revenue fund. Right, but so, I mean, this 260, now is this 265, 132 minus the 10,000? That's two, that's the uh, recommended budget based upon two personnel. <coughs> but the problem is that, that you, cut, you ask to cut the budget. All you're doing is, ta is putting money back in the reserve fund. They have the money in the reserve fund to take care of it. And, and, and like Dottie says, also to take care of your $104,000 for this year. She has the fund, so why cut her, why try to cut? It has no impact on the, on the tax rate. Most of the year, what, we're vo what we'll be voting on is Article 4 which affects our tax rate. Article 7 does not. Tom wanted to cut out the $52,000 for equipment. It just goes back to the reserve fund. But the problem is everybody thinks they can rate it. By, but to see the problem, what's in the reserve fund now has to be used for cable. The 1.5% that you guys got is what's coming in every year. You're going to get 1.5 of the franchise fees that Comcast gives us. But what's in the reserve fund, you cannot ch touch by state law and also by your warrant articles. We're so why are you asking her to cut her budget? I, I, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand. Well, I'm a little confused as well. 
Okay. Because the, the bottom line is Article Four. Yeah, we have to accept. We have to which. We have to, on the Article 10 through Article 14, or Article 15, will wind up affecting. Now the capital, yeah, you know, I don't know about Article 5 or Capital 6, but I mean, Article 7. Yeah, well, we're going to work on Article 4 now. Would you like, uh, you wanted to give them a little? I'll respond uh, when I re research my records regarding this $10,000 reduction in expenses. Thank you. I think it's clearer that way. Okay. Thanks. All right, we're going to move to Article 2, Highway Reconstruction Bond. We, as David said, that's going to move. Yep, I got it. That's going to be a separate discussion in January. We're going to have that for the bonds. Uh, Article 3 is Expendable <coughs> Maintenance Trust. Pick it up here to the council. I think the bond uh, discussion is the last week in December 28th. Oh, that's the 28th one? Oh, December 28th. I'm sorry. So that's December 28th is when we're going to be hearing the uh, Highway Reconstruction Bond. Okay. So, let's see, Article 3, Expendable Maintenance Trust. Council, <coughs> any questions on that? I'm good. Budget Committee? Okay, anybody in the public? Any questions on Article 3, Expendable Maintenance Trust? Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike Brown, Five Carousel Court. It's actually a, a question in general that Dave can probably answer because uh, if you're going to go through these in a serial fashion, if if I'm reading Dave's budget presentation correctly, uh, he's sorry. It's proposed that capital reserve and maintenance trusts be funded at $1.135 million in the FY13 budget, of which Article 3 that we're talking about are now, Article 5, Article 6, and Article 9 make up that number. Is, is that correct, Dave? What number is that, Mike? The, uh, your FY13 recommended funding amount for capital reserve and maintenance trusts is $1.135 million. And if I'm reading tonight's agenda correctly, if we're going to go through these articles, that would that total number is made up between four articles: Article Three, Five, Six, and Nine. Six. Three. It should be Three, Five, and Six. I'll have to check on Nine. But Article Three is the only article that deals with the expendable maintenance trust. Right. And uh, similar to previous years, the requested appropriation is two hundred thousand dollars which is offset by general fund, undesignated fund balance of $100,000, resulting in a net to be raised of 100000 or three, 3 cents impact on the tax rate. Okay. The reason, the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, who's the vice chair? Mr. Vice Chair, uh, is that uh, I'm interested in providing comments on the aggregate of the total number for the capital reserve and maintenance trust versus each individual article. So I'm not sure where and how to give that comment, those comments. Dave, could you get that number for us? Yeah, that Mike is correct. It is uh, Article 3. Uh, article 5 is, is the existing capital reserve funds for our police, I mean for our fire and highway equipment. Article 6 proposed for a new capital reserve fund for a small equipment for the fire department. And the Route 9, uh, Route 102 corridor study is Article 9, which is a non capital reserve fund to go through that corridor study, which was presented to the council. Those are the four issues. Okay. So I guess what I'll say is that, uh, as, as I mentioned at my comments at the last meeting that you had, uh, I do understand uh, the spirit and intent of what Dave's doing in terms of raising, raising the amount in the capital resource and, and maintenance trusts. The FY12 budget was 525,000 for that total. It's being proposed to be increased to 1.135, which is an increase of 116 percent. So I guess what I'm saying as one taxpayer is that while I understand the spirit and intent of, of catching up in those areas, those particular areas that were reduced over the course of the last couple of budgets, I, I am uncomfortable given the economic times. I am uncomfortable increasing those four articles to the point where it's 116 percent and the tax rate uh, for that area goes from zero tax impact last year 
to 12 cents this year. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there as a general statement, and then I'm hoping the council kind of looks at each one of these four articles and comes to a consensus that maybe 116 percent increase in this economic times is a little bit beyond what we should be doing uh, relative to the tax impact it's going to have. But isn't part of the problem with that 116 percent your denominator is last year and if you were inordinately low last year you're going to increase the percentage? Well you're the CPA Tom so I'm not going to be able to hold hold an argument with you here. Well, I think you were around 300,000. Well, no, I can't. It's wrong. It's, um, I think the maintenance trust, you were at around 300,000. Article 5, for example, and we're at 710 or 350. So yeah. 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 So I, I so think that might be part of it. Whether we should be catching up or not, I don't know. But I, I, I guess I'd have to know is what the what the calculus was last year when you were 300,000. If that was the, the number, fine, but if you deferred things for years, then maybe it's not an accurate use of that percentage. Well, let me, let me uh, rephrase it and then I'll let some other folks speak. Uh, I understand the spirit and intent of trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that that needs to be done. Given that there isn't a dramatic change in last year's economy versus this year's economy, I don't think catching up at that level of a percent increase, whatever the numbers are, is appropriate given the tax impact that it's going to have, which is essentially a zero tax impact in last year's budget to a 12 cent tax impact this year. I think there's some somewhere in between that the council should strive for to help lessen the impact on the taxpayer. That's what I'm saying. And follow through with the spirit and intent of trying to increase those lines based on Dave's proposal versus funding it at the level that he's asking. I think there's a, there's a compromise in it. It strikes the balance between delivering less of a tax impact but catching up a little bit more than the previous years. Maybe one, maybe one could ask the school board to look at maybe further reducing some of their budget. Just so, saying. So I have a question. Uh, I don't understand. It, it won't be the about action. the school board. <laughs> they, they, is this a town Sorry. council meeting? Yes, it is. Okay. For how many I'm years did we facetious. underfund and how much? How many years did we underfund and for how much? I believe we uh, we, we uh, uh, revised the plan uh, for a period of three years, and and just for just for the council's information, look at a net tax impact. The additional tax dollars uh, requested to be raised, although the gross appropriation is the same for Article 3, the trust funds is $25,000. Uh, Article 5, the Calper Reserve Fund, is 35000 The reason there's a large gross appropriation number is because we uh, had past projects which were not completed. Uh, South London Dairy Sewer, which was raised by the taxpayers about 10 years ago, and that, for our auditor, has been lapsed in the general fund requesting that that be reappropriated to the Calper Reserve Fund. The uh, Fire Department Equipment, equipment Capital Reserve, a new fund for the Fire Department Small Equipment. Uh, the net tax impact is 50000 and uh, the corridor study is a new item, $75,000, $30,000 uh, UFD, so net of forty five. So of all those, all those uh, issues we're looking at, uh, the additional funds to be raised off the tax rate is $155,000 as proposed for FY13. So how much did we short it for for the last, how many years we've been shorting the fund? Just to give you an example is that the original plan for Calpa Reserve uh, was to raise last year $250,000 from the tax rate. We raised two hundred and twenty. dollars uh, The trust fund was supposed to be 100000 and we raised seventy five. dollars And uh, the, the previous year uh, was a little more dramatic. So uh, my, my estimation is, uh, in total, it's probably in the range of uh, $200,000 tax impact between where we should be today as opposed to where we currently are. So over the last three to four budgets, we've shorted the fund $200,000, and you're asking for an additional 150000 this year? Well, for the for the uh, to, to make up that two hundred thousand. Right, but apples to apples to make up the two hundred thousand, we're looking at sixty thousand this year. The other two funds are new. 
Okay. So looking just at expendable trust in capital reserve, we're looking, we're requesting an increase of sixty thousand dollars from the tax base. Okay. Does is everyone equally as muddy on that now? It's clear as mud. We'll get you information and visual. It's a lot easier to look at. I understand, but, but the, yeah. so the numbers are those are closer. All right, thank you. But what, what, are the, <laughs> what are the articles that just so everybody's watching at home can keep track? The articles that this encompasses are the, the two existing three. trust funds. What, which is what article number again? Three. three. Yeah. Is articles yeah. three and five. Yep. Yeah. The new trust funds for consideration in FY13 are articles six and nine. Incidentally, the fire trust fund I think was recommended by the CIP and then the planning board because of all the small equipment they now carry on all the different trucks. We recommended that instead of them going out and buying it, that we would um, either reserve for it. There was talk of bonding it, but I think it was more now we're reserving for it. Yeah, we reserve for it or else lease it, but I don't think we'd bond it though. This is this is everything we, we tried to figure out. I think we tried to figure out if we could, but it's all that stuff they carry on the trucks to do all those things they do. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> uh, Dave uh, and Sue, uh, with regard to the uh, what Dave said, he's going to go back and do and look at the numbers. Uh, when you come back with that, could you help us understand the, the strategic plan around the catch up? Because we're not doing it all in one year. Oh right? no, absolutely not. So what what your thoughts are? Sure. I know we can't, you know, with the caveat that we can't burden future councils. <laughs> at least we can have a strategic plan as to what the what the line looks like in terms of catch up and how many years at, at, at what amounts per year. Sure. Just a couple other general comments is that uh, we discussed at a previous budget meeting that given the needs of the highway and fire departments for equipment and rolling stock, uh, even at taking <coughs> FY's 13 appropriation and increasing the, the tax impact by $50,000 a year, over a 10 year horizon, we're still going to be short uh, by I think about a million dollars. Uh, primarily because uh, we've got a ladder truck in there uh, at, at some point. Uh, the other comment is, is starting the fire department equipment cap reserve. That's always been in the fire department operating budget. Unfortunately, when, uh, when times are difficult, that's always the first item to be removed. The, uh, uh, the department submitted a plan which would require $160,000 every year. And uh, frankly, I don't know if we can do that. We can do 150 this year because we have $100,000 in undesignated fund balance to be applied against 150. I'm not sure if those funds will be there every year as an offset. Uh, so uh, those are two issues we requested council consideration and town meeting consideration because, you know, we haven't changed our replacement schedule. We haven't, we haven't accelerated the replacement of our vehicles. We kept the same schedule. And I just don't want the town to be in a position five and ten years down the road uh, looking at bonding over multiple years for vehicles it's just it's just not good business practice <laughs> agreed so, okay so can i come yeah, of course okay so um i just wanted to just make a quick comment on it um, now that i um following exactly which articles they are sorry I'm a little bit behind trying to get some research done here um i just wanted to uh say that you know as a few people in town have reminded me this 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 year it's a question of uh essential versus non-essential. Non and, that, and that's really what, every time I look at the budget, I, I actually question in my mind. Um, is this an essential or a non-essential? And just um, uh, I'll share with you really, really quick um, a visit that I had uh, to the fire department with Captain Rogers. And one of the things that he explained to me that some of these funds are for was to, uh, you know, you, you have the, these items that you buy, as, as, John, as Councilor John alluded to, that you buy every year and you, you kind of put them away. You know, you may buy 30 of something and you may use 20 and then you have 10, you know, the backup. Well, they've used the 10. That, that 10 has gone by, by uh, you know, underfunding these things. You're, you're looking at uh, now kind of the rainy day fund, uh, the rainy day equipment, those, those essential pieces of, of uh, life-saving um, um, apparatus or, or, or uh, um, uh, equipment that they may need. Um, to to uh, correctly fight a fire or save somebody's life or et cetera et cetera. So um, I just wanted people to understand that it's not just looking at numbers. We're actually um, you know as councils we're going to visit. We're going to look at things to make sure that it's, it is essential. I mean obviously we trust the people that um, that work for us, but at the same time we we, we have to verify. Um, so uh, it was a big eye-opening experience for me to see that and, and just to try to justify it in my mind that. 
you know, we had a reserve uh, of, of, of um, items for a long time, and that's what we've been kind of dipping into. Um, so just, just wanted to throw that out there, too. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Anybody from the Budget Committee? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Um, so the purpose of establishing these capital reserve funds is to ensure that those funds will be used only for the designated purpose. Correct. And that there, in this case, there will not be a method of diverting those funds from, say, fire department equipment to, say, cable studio fund. Cable Pardon? studio. <laughs> uh, for the general revenue. That's so correct. These Lisa. will be used explicitly for the purpose. Hundred percent. They're designated. Okay. Hundred uh, percent. For her, to her question, is there at a later time that? The council could have a vote to have those appropriations moved. Town meeting has to make that vote. Just with two thirds of front. To make sure vote. that was also put That's out right. there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is this appropriate to um, ask a question about Article Nine, or are you we'll get to that later? We we'll can take that one up separate, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. No. Thank you. Clarification. Thank you. Okay. Anybody from the public want to comment on uh, Article Three, Expendable Maintenance Trust? Okay, moving on to the Article 4, General Operating Budget. Um, okay, so we'll start off with the Council. Any, are there any questions from any of the Councils right now? Joe, do you want to start off or not? <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, I just, um, as we go through this, my, my understanding, uh, was that we were looking at default plus three hundred thousand dollars for uh, to put on um, this article, and uh, I had some questions on uh, the usage of that three hundred thousand um, dollars, as indicated um, by the media this this week, and uh, I had questions on specifically um, looking at uh, how that three hundred thousand dollars would be um, used um, if the town should vote it in. So I had been uh, interested in uh, zeroing out many of the um, items that the town manager submitted to the council, um, which were additional above and beyond uh, last year's budget plus any um, contractual obligations. Uh, so it was not cutting uh, police, it was not cutting fire, it was not cutting anybody. The services would be maintained, um, but there were things that were additional above and beyond um, um, th uh, that I thought could uh, wait for another day. Um, three areas that I thought were very important uh, to indicate um, were overtime salaries, um, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. was also to include uh, snow overtime salaries. Um, and uh, if the way uh, the weather's been going, I hope, and we'll jinx ourselves by saying it now, uh, hopefully we'll save a lot of that. But the other one was gasoline expense. Uh, <clears throat> those were uh, three areas I found to um, be underfunded. Um, to the point that um, we really needed to look at what we um, would be would be using, uh, and I tried to clarify it for the public of those people that are in the audience today that weren't here last time, that in um, this council's opinion that the overtime salaries are very essential um, because it covers um, the replacement of people while uh, they are um, sick and while they're on vacation, uh, and this. Um, uh, the question keeps coming up about, you know, well, can't we hire somebody else, uh, et cetera, you know, and, and, and kind of um, get that $174,000 kind of, you know, down by hiring somebody else. So that's that's something obviously we got to we got to talk about. But really, what uh, this line item addresses is that specific overtime salary, um, and then again the uh, gasoline expenses. That, as everybody knows, we are not at $2 a gallon anymore, so um, we need to really budget that and, and, and calculate it based off of the usage. So that was just something I wanted to kind of throw out there again. Okay, so just checking for understanding. Do you, are you saying you want Dave to put in the gasoline numbers that are in there, or you want them to be higher? No, I just wanted to, uh, there were, um, I think, 14 items um, that were indicated that um, when we asked them to, you know, well, here is, what we want you to go back and do, we want you to go back and have the uh, default to put on the uh, article, to default plus $300,000, and we asked them how that would look. So um, we all got um, that Excel spreadsheet and how that looked. 
is that there were some items on there that um, I felt could be um, reduced. And so um, to the point where I tried to make it more of a summary uh, and say that the 174.32 and 93.422 of the gasoline expense would be the $300,000 that um, I would like to indicate if we were to, if the, if the town was to, to vote in the default plus $300,000, I would like to indicate that those would be areas we'd like to direct um, those expenses to be funded in. So uh, does that clarify or does that make you more confused? I'm sorry. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Do you want us to go? Yeah, I'm just at, you know, if you have concerns, I want you to bring it up and let's talk about it. And Dave, um, on the town clerk's budget, it, it, with your reductions for the first 300000 is there still a part-time intern? There, in there is. It's uh, one of the For 5000 That's correct. Yeah, that okay. would be a, a position to... Uh, take care of those those uh, filing other tasks which we don't no longer do what we need to do because of the reduction in staff from previous years okay um, I, I, I I would suggest we we look at foregoing that for this year um, in, in information technology you have a line item I think for 17,000 in uh, replacement computers that's, right. still that's, in that's the difference between the default and what we recommend is additional seventeen thousand dollars in, exp in expenditures. Okay. So we could we you you, there's a three hundred thousand dollar gap between default and your budget now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The default is pretty much between, halfway between the default budget and my recommended budget. So is it, is your budget now? Does it include the seventeen thousand? With the three hundred thousand dollars above default, it does. Okay, that's correct. So if we held off on that, because I I've kind of worked out some numbers to, uh, I think I've shared it with you, to get to default. <coughs> um, uh, general government, you know, I think we'd we'd have to come up with fifty thousand dollars or something like that. Um, Um, I was looking towards the library, and I know there's nobody here, I guess, to, to speak to it, but um, regarding a reduction in library services. And what um, was kind of a concern to me was, while well, they gave us some broad ideas of what, uh, for example, a $100,000 reduction in the library would be, there's no specifics of it. I mean, just the idea we're going to close Friday or Saturday. I don't even know if that achieves any savings. Um, are they going to get back to us on those? They will. They did respond uh, this afternoon that they haven't had adequate time because they only heard from me, frankly, from this morning about additional explanations. So I requested that information be made available so the council could consider it at your December 28th budget workshop. And, and just a, an, another question. Regarding the days that if they, if there was closure of the library, is that something that has to be negotiated with the? Uh... I I I need to check the contract. I don't know if that contract specifies hours, unlike some of our other contracts. It's been a while since I read it. I don't remember hours in it. However, uh, one of their proposals is to close the library for one week per year, and again, we'll review that. <coughs> My sense is that issue will have to be negotiated. Yeah, because that would affect it as a basically it would Your be furlough. a furlough. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, I'll, I'll come back to mine. Todd? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add a little um, with regard to a little library uh, budget benchmarking that I've done. You got it. Um, I I've looked at about nine surrounding communities. Um, <coughs> in these surrounding communities, it included, of course, our library the Concord Public Library, the Kelly Library of Salem, Merrimack Public Library, Dover Public Library, Derry Public Library, Bedford Public Library, the Nesmith yeah. Library in Wyndham, and the Rogers Memorial Library in Hudson. Of all of those, we are among the top three budgets. 
Uh, the highest one was in Concord, but they service about 41,000 uh, people versus you know, so almost half lot, that yeah, here. So sure. uh, their budget was about 1.5 million. Ours is a, comes in at 1.3 million, and the Salem uh, Kelly Library came in about 1.4 million. That's all well and good, but where it really breaks down, um, I broke it down in terms of what does that budget really buy us as a community when we look at the number of hours that they're open. Um, and I looked at it in terms of hours open per week and hours open, extrapolated that out over a year, divided that number into the total budget number to come up with the dollar amount that it costs our town per open hour of operation. And when you break it down that way, we're only open for 1.3 million, which is proposed, we're only open 52 hours a week. That makes it, when you extrapolate that out over the year, that makes it uh, come out to about $482.62 is what it costs our town per open hour of operation for that library. When you compare that to uh, Concord, that breaks down, they're open 65 hours a week, breaks down to about $466 per open hour of operation. And then the next most expensive budget is Salem. They're open 68 hours a week, and their budget was, again, $1.4 million. That breaks down to about $398 per open hour of operation. And then it continues down the trend. Um, you can see the trend here, if I hold this up. This is our library cost per open hour of operation. This is on the lower end of the scale. You can see that open hours of operation range from the lowest, Londonderry, at 52 hours per week, and the highest, Salem, at 68 hours per week. So it just begs the question, for $1.3 million, I would think we should be able to be open more hours per week. Um, I'm just throwing that out there as a, as a data point, and I have this if anybody wants to see it. Um, I'd love to. I can, I can pass it down. I have Fred, an extra copy there, here. But you send that electronically. Yeah, can yeah. you send that to us? That'd I can. Um, and, yeah. and basically, I did this analysis a little deeper, and I looked at it in terms of an average of this entire sample. So our population that our library serves is, on average, given this statistical sample that I took, the average of the sample was a population of 27,048 people. That makes Londonderry about 2,919 people more, um, uh, uh, below that average. Um, okay, so we're below the average on the population, but for $143,000 over the average of the sample, and the average of the budget, um, when I take the average of all the sample, it was about 1.157 million. Open average. Uh, of open hours per week, we came in about 60.4. So we're about 8.4 hours under what the average of the sample should be. The long and the short of it is, when you break it down at a cost per open hour of operation, on average for this sample came out to be about $370 per hour. So we're about $112 over what the average of this statistical sample is. Uh, when, I, when I look at, again, it's looking at the budget, divide by the number of hours of open operation per year, which is based on 52 hours open a week. So it just, it just begs the question, why is it costing us so much for so little? Uh, it's a great library. I personally am, am very familiar with the Kelly Library. I'm familiar with the Nesmith Library. I'm not that familiar with some of these other libraries. They're all good libraries. They're excellent libraries. I have no problem personally with the $1.3 million budget for a library. My only argument is I'd like to see it open more hours given the statistics that I, I, I was able to uh, attain. And it's all available information online, you know, when you look at the budgets of the various towns. Um, I did similar breakdowns for the police, fire, DPW. Police, fire, DPW, and the short of it all is we're doing very well right in a sweet spot, statistically speaking, uh, in terms of if you wanted to parade it out in terms of a bell curve. We're doing very well in those departments. <laughs> I would argue that we're doing extremely well cost-wise when you break it down in a similar fashion, population, land area-wise that they got to cover, et cetera. 
We're doing great. In fact, I'd argue that our DPW is doing a phenomenal job, and they're under budget. Oh, he's in the but room. I know where that oh, goes. Oh, 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 oh. uh, your road will get plowed first now. <laughs> no. get, get your address out there. Junk is write that down. I mean, <laughs> the uh, statistics. Extra sanding for you. <laughs> Todd, I got a question doing, for you. Sure. You're doing so well, too. <laughs> you, oh, you have you yeah. done the, that, uh, the math? In reverse, I mean, if you took the number of hours libraries open times the average in the sample, the average cost per hour, could you back extrapolate as to what the budget would be in that case? Well, I calculated that I think it should be open 67 hours a week. I mean, if, if it stayed million. open, he based it on 1.3 million. If you took the number of hours it is open mm -hmm. times the average cost in your sample of Oh, uh, what the uh, to go backwards to see what the what the budget might be instead of 1.3. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's an easy uh, calculation here. 52 hours. I just sent you guys the uh, library union contract, <laughs> and it's um, there's no hours of operation yet. Oh. Okay, thank you. It should be based on that. It should be about one point, uh, actually one million. Um, <coughs> 1,372, 32 cents. So about 300,000 less than it is being proposed at? Roughly, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a data point. I mean, it's, so it's just an average. I mean, you know, one could argue, well, some libraries may have better programs and so forth and so on, and, and I understand all that. Um, but when you look at the numbers, it just, to me, it jumps out at me. We have the third highest budget out of the sample, but we have the fewest open hours of operation. It's I, that simple. Could I just speak to that? Um, I know that um, there's, there's really a lot of utilization of this facility in our community, and I know there are a lot of people in this room who spend time over at Leach Library, either on their own or with their children. This is a very valid way of, of starting to analyze it, but we also have to ask ourselves what other programs are, are being brought forward to the children and the people of our community that may not exist in some of these other libraries. So there are more subtle aspects of this that I hope that we take into consideration as we move forward. Uh, I, I have no problem with the question being asked, however. What are those, what are those benefits that might not be... Uh, obvious from this analysis. Well, if we had a library rep here, we could ask that question. I was thinking we might, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. It's, Maybe it's next time. A, it's just a budget hearing. It's just a data point I thought might be useful for the folks to it's good analysis. It's a very good analysis mm -hmm. and good point, Lisa. Very Thank interesting. Okay. <coughs> Well, I'm going down through this first, and then we'll open it up because we get all these to touch on. So, is it broken now? Yeah, <coughs> hey, Dave. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just wanted to clarify, kind of um, bring people all, all the way up to speed on this. Um, if you recall, um, and I sent this, um, or at least I put it on the view of the, the computers for all the councils to look at. There were 38 items altogether that I identified as being um, more than default and, again, more than uh, yeah, uh, uh, additions to the budget. Somebody just said, nice we, you, uh, you had asked uh, staff or you had uh, spoken to the people within your depa the departments um, if there were SDRs um, or if they were um, items that, you know, were absolutely essential and non-essential, et cetera. So uh, once we whittle those down, we uh, were talking about the 22 items. Um, so I'm wondering if there's any way that we can, I mean, it, it's, it's things like additional personnel salaries, training benefits, special investigation services, um, custodial services, rental and lease services, public ed, uh, dues and subs, uh, seminars and workshops, crime prevent supplies, uh, <coughs> civil defense expense, um, other miscellaneous expense, uh, capital lease, and senior fair, old home day, and furniture and fixtures. D just, it was a matter of um, one of the questions that we had a few minutes ago was that, uh, well, is this uh, before or after those those items were taken into consideration that were um, kind of that were already eliminated? Once you once you hit the default plus three hundred thousand, there were already items that were el eliminated from your manager's budget. So. 
I don't know if it's a good idea to, I would ask actually if you could send that around to say, okay, here is, you know, where, where we're at as far as the town manager's budget, um, what, which one of those SDRs were eliminated, at least so that I can, I, I only talked about three that were, that were, could possibly be funded, but it's also goes in reverse when we're, mm -hmm. if we come up with a, uh, the town only giving us the default or $100,000 under the default, it's still useful to kind of look at those items uh, one by one. As I think you mentioned, the IT computers as one, yeah. as one example. Sure, just just uh, generally, uh, based upon my recommended allocation of the operating budget at the level of 300000 above the fault, yeah. uh, for example, we have identified uh, $46,000 in operating line items in the fire department, which have been removed from my recommended budget. Uh, this level restores uh, $28,000 of those line items. Uh, of the $150,000 additional police department overtime, <coughs> Uh, it restores about 115,000 of that. So I can give you that information, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I think it would be really, sure. so kind of to give us, stay on the same page, because I know what you're getting, you're getting a spreadsheet from me, a spreadsheet from Tom, John, uh, probably everybody, you know, is, 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 is sending you things. But if we can at least say, okay, here's what we're looking at. Absolutely, um, sure. Um, that's okay to do legally, right? You can, you can oh, yeah. as long as you send it out, this is what Joe has, this is what Tom has. I mean, this is, okay. Yeah, just, Talking about the legal thing, the only thing is that three councils can engage in a conversation, but as right. far as communication electronically back and forth, they're public documents, but they're certainly allowed by the law. Yeah, what, what, I, what I didn't want, what I was being cautious, cautious to do is I did put it on our um, shared drive just so that we could look at during this time, and I deleted it, but I didn't send it out to all the councils, and mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe that would be a good idea if you, if you shared the, the, that bottom Absolutely. line. Sure. With them. This way, at least we're kind of at a starting point, because uh, I just realized when, when Tom asked about the IT uh, 17,000, well, we're, we're all talking about the same thing, but in different conversations, you know? Sure. So. Okay. okay so Thank you, Sean. A couple of questions no, for problem. Dave, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Dave, if we go to default, are we still laying people off? <coughs> no, we are not. We are not laying people off if we go to default. We are not. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what I'd be looking for here is, is, um, is I think that we went into this budget process saying we're going to tell the people of the town what it, ha what it takes to actually run the town. I don't happen to agree with the current budget that's 300000 over its default. I don't think it will pass with the voters. But I do think if we can explain $200,000 over default from the standpoint of shoring up things like overtime and gasoline and you know what real cost of things are, I think that's you know a budget that can have a chance of passing. Anything beyond 200,000, I really think we're probably kidding ourselves. And uh, you know what I would like to see is is our best effort at 200,000 over plan, cutting whatever things we need to cut, but I think for our next meeting we have to at least get down to 200,000 to have a real conversation. One point of view. Mm -hmm. Dave, um, I was looking at the IT it's, we're at 341595 that's proposed. Um, what kind of flexibility is in that? What, it, what's contracted versus <coughs> planned expenditures for the 2013 <coughs> budget? The contracts that we have is uh, located within our management services. Those are all software contracts. We also have a contractual services line item with the uh, company that we outsource at this point. Everything else, machinery, equipment, that sort of thing is, that's listed out by department, of what department needs are. So okay. that's where that would need to be looked at, reevaluated. Right. So equipment goes into the departments, everything that's in IT is a fixed, is, is a fixed contractual cost. I'm sorry, John, what? Everything that's in the 341,000 is a fixed contractual cost? Not everything. No, just so the management what's, services. what's not? The management services for 142,445. Is contractual. It's contractual, then. That's contractual, and the contracted services for one hundred nineteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. So Those two amounts are contractual. So about two sixty. Okay. Is contractual. So, so just so to tie this in to what I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. Sean, what you're trying to do too is you're looking at these line items and saying, okay, what's in there and what's you know uh, essential and what, and so what we did was is that we went and said, okay, of that IT, it's so much over last year and so much over budget and what was the number 
So when we, I went back and went back to town manager, he said, "Well, these were, um, you know, that word SDR staff, you know, reductions that could possibly be made." And to be even more specific, what that was was seventeen thousand, you know, seventeen thousand dollars in IT uh, computer replacements. So again, I I'm summarizing, I guess, and, and you, now we're going into more detail. So I apologize for, for summarizing a little bit too much earlier, Sorry. but that spreadsheet will, will will do that for us. It'll kind of identify. You know, after going through this big giant book, identify those areas that are um, oh, what was the word essential versus non-essential. That that again, I'm trying to mm -hmm. identify. Mm -hmm. Do we have a leasing program for any of our IT equipment? Um, we lease our copy machines, our central copy machines. Right. As far as our computers itself, we used to be under a leasing program, and we found that it was not cost beneficial to do that any longer. Yeah, with the great reduction in cost and everything, it probably isn't. So we can get we can get computers. It depreciates so price. fast. Commodities. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just checking. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, with the suggested rec uh, reductions I gave you, we get to default, I think, or close. Um, but and I know you don't want to talk about it till after uh, the until December twenty eighth. But I, I think for me, part of the discussion has to be about. Eliminating Article Two and putting some sort of uh, um, funds for Yano's uh, repairs back in the budget, with perhaps two hundred thousand dollars. But um, so I don't know when you want to, if you still want to wait till have that to, uh, on the twenty eighth. But yeah. I mean, but that gets me at least to where John is at the you know the fall plus two hundred. I think what would be beneficial at the end of this meeting is for the council to arrive at some direction as to what number you want me to work on. And number one, mm -hmm. so we said 200 as an example. Number two, what's your priorities with respect to that number? I've heard gasoline and, and, and replacement coverage and overtime. And number three, how is the council uh, considering uh, on Article 8, which is fire department staffing? Because currently we know we have a deficit in fire department overtime coverage as an example. These numbers not include that because that's in a separate article. If the council the council's preference is not to put that as a separate article. I've got to incorporate that in the priorities, which which the council hope is going to give me tonight. So once I one, once I build that number, mm -hmm. if you so there's really two choices with respect to Tom's proposal. If the council decides to not bond for road reconstruction this year, but actually to have a warrant article, but to include the tax impact in that, you're either going to add to the tax impact or you're just going to reduce that number. Close to the fault to accommodate those roads. Follow. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if, if you give me direction of develop a prioritized budget at, at the fault plus two hundred thousand, and then you also tell me raise two hundred thousand dollars for roads, but have it within that two hundred thousand dollars over the fault, then that's your over the fault number. See what I'm saying? So, so those if, are the three. If that's the path we're going down. Yeah. If that's yeah. the path we're going down. Yeah. So those are the four items I do need uh, to be responsive to you for the 28th. So one, one's a budget item and one's a separate article, right? Uh, so in other words, the budget is an article, right? That, but that's correct. One's one, one is one that the uh, citizens of Londonderry will decide on, and one is one that we'll offer as a consideration within Right, and, and there's two ways to handle that. One is you could say, we want an operating budget of default plus 200, and then we're also going to offer the citizens an opportunity to raise 200 in a separate article for roads, or the direction may be that in totality, we want a number equal to default over 200, which means I have to include that $200,000 in the tax impact. So it depends upon how you guys want to do it. It's either way. It's a policy decision. Okay, so our Article 8 we're going to take to the voters because trying to take it as part of the budget is just wow. probably futile. Right. So that's the 403. We're going to take that as a separate article, see if the citizens of London Dairy want to add additional firefighters. That would be about seventy-six thousand for additional replacement coverage, and then another three hundred twenty-four thousand for four additional firefighters. Right, it was three twenty-six okay. somewhere in that area. Yeah, I Tom, think I'm, Tom, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, just, just uh, not a comment of endorsement or lack of endorsement, but just uh, for long-term planning. If we bond the road reconstruction, the interest on the bond, the payment on the bond, becomes part of the next year's default. If we pull the bond off the table and fund it all with cash, then that that amount becomes part of next year's default. So it's just 
That's just correct. to understand that there is a, a longer term impact uh, that next year's council will have to consider. Right. Understood. John, back to you. We did, we, I'm good. It just, if you did that, if the bond, would, th would there be a bond payment next year in the default? Because wouldn't that technically be the first year? Or will it be it the would, yeah, the, the half-year interest payment would become part of the default. However, when you look at the default budget for FY14, you look at contractual obligations which the bond is one, so your budget would automatically be increased to make sure you can be able to pay for the entire principal and interest for FY14. Oh, okay. it's, it's the same thing as labor contracts. If you, had, if you can negotiate a 2% raise, you put that in next year's budget, it's an add-on as, as uh, directed by state law. Okay. Uh, anybody in the public would like to speak to Article 4, the general operating budget? Mike Brown, 5 Carousel Court. Aren't you glad we spent 90 minutes on the smaller number? Uh, just for clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, can I ask the town manager a question? Sure. Yeah. Ahead, so Dave, just for clarification, because I think it does get missed by, by some folks. Uh, when, when the conversation is around uh, 300 over default, 200 over default, at default, under default. We're talking specifically about one article, the operating budget. That's correct. That one article drives a portion, a large portion of the tax rate. However, that's not the only thing that drives the tax rate. That's correct. Right. So the tax rate, so whether we, whether the council agrees on a number and comes forward, uh, that default uh, number is is separate and distinct from the tax impact that, that capital reserves and maintenance trusts will have, special warrant articles will have, and the overlay and veterans will have. Right. So uh, a taxpayer's tax bill will be in part determined by the default, the, the, the budget that's determined here, but there'll be more than that going into the tax rate and tax bill. That's correct. Okay. All right. <coughs> so speaking about just this article, uh, and it kind of, kind of referenced the comments that I, that I made before to you folks and also at the Budget Committee. Uh, as one taxpayer, and I'm speaking just for myself, I, I am interested in uh, uh, less government uh, in the form of just, just kind of focusing on essential services. Councillor Farrell mentioned, you know, what we need to run the town. Uh, while we can kind of debate what that means, I think what what, what's implied is what's essential to operate the town. Uh, so when you look at the operating budget, it does appear that there are five, three departments that are essential to what I think local government should do, which is, you know, uh, provide safety to its citizens in the form of our police budget and fire budget, and then also the roads, which is the public works budget. That's 16,407,000. And then there's solid waste and debt service, which I think kind of roll off the table for discussion relative to this article, and that's another 4.8 million. So that's 21 million 213 that's kind of already put on the side as essential operating the town. And then there's other things. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm interested in, in a budget that's, that's at or below default is I think of the 5.5 5.485 million that's left, I think there are ways to come up with that 300,000 that you're looking at right now or even more. And I, I would request that the council consider, you know, looking at things such as the, the charitable contributions. And the reason I bring that up is, is you know, I personally believe that uh, charity is, is a private matter. It's something that individuals uh, choose to do on their own behalf or their family's behalf, and they choose it in a variety of ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, I'm not comfortable with the town providing a charitable contribution on behalf of everyone by using our money. So I think you've got $70,000 in that, in that line item. I think it rolls up under 
general government or Dave's budget, and I'm not sure where, but, you know, I'd prefer that the council kind of entertain that as one area that be reviewed as, you know, whether that's needed to kind of run the town. I don't think it is. So I think there's some play there to help us get down to de uh, default or below. Uh, the library budget's been mentioned before. That is the next highest number. Uh, there's a lot of folks who are passionate about the library. They feel that it is essential. Uh, I believe it, it provides a service that's, that's valuable to folks, but I don't think it kind of fits that, what we need to run the town with. Uh, so I think there's some room there to help us get to de default or below. One of the articles, which is the Route 102 corridor study, which is number nine, which I know we'll discuss later, I think that's something else uh, that can be considered. Uh, and, and anything else within the operating budget that, that can be looked at as to whether it fits that model of is this something that's essential to running the town. Uh, so as one citizen, I'm hoping that the, the council kind of consider looking at those areas uh, and, you know, get us to default or below. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Anybody else on Article 4? Uh, Martin Sruga, 17 Wimbledon Drive. Just a quick uh, statement. Under solid waste, uh, in talking with the town engineer, Bob Carey, I think it is, uh, I asked him if we increase the recycling rate from 21% up to 40%, which I know is awfully high, uh, we could save $165,000 in tipping fees. And this is something, again, we're going to have to look toward the future as uh, we have other areas in town developing, especially around Woodmont Commons and some uh, more homes coming into town, we need to look at that part of it because it's going to be increasing cost in the future, especially as uh, Rochester becomes uh, full. You know, the question will come up, where do we put the stuff? So uh, there's something that the town's people can do something about that if they can just double their recycling rate from what they're doing now, uh, they could help to, uh, you know, reduce the budget by that, that amount. It's not a huge amount compared to all the other stuff, but at least it's a, it's a, it's a good-sized stone in the, in the pond. Well, your point, I think that's great. Uh, every little bit counts. You know, the data points that we were talking about earlier, um, you know, almost $200,000 just by looking at the details. So. so I think one of the options, um, Marty, that the... Uh, Solid Waste Committee, I think, has considered is uh, that we haven't uh, embraced in town is mandatory recycling. Are you, would you be in favor of that? Uh, as long as I don't get all the emails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it may be. A lot of towns do that. But it, it's, it's optional, in our, as you know, in our community. Okay. Moving on to Article 5, Capital Reserve Funds. Oh, okay. I'm not showing. No, 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 sir. <laughs> That's fine. If they have questions, you can put their hands up. Capital reserve funds. Dave, why don't you give us a little bit on that? Yeah, again? just for clarification, this appropriation allows the town to set aside funds for the systematic replacement of uh, our fire and highway equipment, including heavy equipment, uh, fire trucks, ambulances. Uh, so what we used to do is try to put X number of dollars in each fund every year, you know, uh, with the pr it wasn't the top priority to see which ex which purchases were coming up in the near future, which are coming up in the in the long term. So there's two different changes this year. Is one we had we had some project funds lap the surplus on design fund balance of about three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. What we'd like to do is reappropriate that back in the capital reserve funds to get us to get us start to get us caught up. And also is that instead of having a level amount into each fund or, or slightly increasing, <coughs> we'll specifically target each year's appropriation to specific funds based upon <coughs> the timing of the placement of that equipment. Uh, for example, we've got a, a majority of this of the proposed expense or FY uh, 13 into the fire department apparatus fund because we're looking at replacing a number of fire trucks in the uh, in the next couple couple years. And so we're looking at, you know, each truck's going to run you about four four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we're trying to beef up that fund. 
Uh, but but the, uh, the bottom line is, we'll go back and look at our records, but the bottom line is I believe that the, the tax impact for Article 5 is, is suggested to be increased by uh, $35,000 over what it currently is in FY12. So the gross number is a large number. The net to be raised is an increase uh, of about $35,000. Okay, thanks, Dave. Any questions from the Council or the Budget Committee? Dave, uh, actually, one question. How did you come up with your uh, breakdown of what you took out of fund balance versus your tax rate? Well, what we've tried to do is try to maintain somewhat of a level impact on the tax rate. And as we discussed previously, we're going to have to increase, from our perspective, the investment in tax dollars to the fund. So what we've tried to do is have used the net to be raised by taxes as the basis and just ratchet that up slowly. And then we look at see, frankly, what's available <coughs> as far as undesignated fund balance. And if, did we, and if we run into a year like we have this year, we did about five years ago, where we had some excess undesignated fund balance, we essentially recommend that we make a balloon payment to those funds to help us get caught up with what we have to them. Okay. Thank you. Any members of the public questions on the Capital Reserve Fund, Article 5? Did we finish Article 4? <coughs> yes, we did. I did. I do know how to do it, so I don't have to learn. But if you'd like to question it, step right up. You can still go back to it, Reed. There's nothing prohibiting you from doing that. Come on up. Reed Clark, Stone End Road. I like that going once, going twice, done. So, so we can. It's not done. It's a budget hearing, Reed. So if you have a question, you can step up. We're not going to stop you from talking. Okay. Well, believe me. I had 16 calls, and 13 of which were about the town. Only three from the majority of what we pay for. Um, uh, school. The 13 about the town dealt mostly, conclu almost entirely with, with the exception of one, with um, the highway, the fire, and the police. They, none of them lowered, lowered the amount of money what they wanted. Some of them, two of them wanted to know if the fire department, I believe um, <coughs> Mr. Uh, Captain Rogers um, said uh, that, that four, that were ne four um, firefighters were needed on each shift and there was only three on each shift. And if he had gotten that from some handbook, why didn't we have four as a matter of being part of a well-regulated town? Um, same with the police. I did not hear Chief Hart's presentation on the police, but I think they were, they are at a lower capacity too. And this man, these two people wanted to know why we weren't at least on an even keel. The others, none of them incidentally could figure out how to get the money for it, so that, that's your problem. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they, they um, all wanted to be even. Um, most of them, in fact all of them except one, wanted to say that it was ne necessary to run the town both for the disenfranchised and other words the people without um, a job and for the people with a fixed income and for the people who may or 
maybe affluent or maybe ma just making it. The town is, for safety purposes, the same for everybody. So it's up to you to figure out whether, well, it's up to the voters, I guess, to figure out whether one should be at a level with the fire department and the police department and whether the bumps in the road in the highway should be fixed. Two of them were very argumentative that we are just once in a while getting enough money to fix the roads like last year. And um, because there's a lot of safety issues concerning the roads. And the, 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 one, the one person wanted to know very clearly whether the council, and um, I don't know how to put this. I'm supposed to be the diplomat. Um, whether the council considered lack of a job affluence um, or just making it or fixed income as being different <coughs> from, the, from the sake of view of safety of the town. And I, I said, well, you know, that um, you ask the person in each category that question and you'll get a different answer. And um, I mean, the human beings in that category, but you all have to make a decision as to whether there is a difference somehow. And um, if they don't give their names and you don't recognize their voices, it's very strange when people get mad and you can't tell who they are. So you should, you know, at least sit down with them somewhere. But um, six, uh, only 16, that's the lowest I've had in 14 years. Lowest number of people called me. So, and incidentally, under what, Dave, under what general government possibly, or no general assistance? I'm sure it's not. But under what does old home day come? General government. Okay. Thank you, Reed. <coughs> okay. Going back to Article Five, were there any questions on the capital reserve? Okay. Moving on to Article 6, uh, Dave, why don't you give us a little uh, heads up on what that is? Sure. This is a proposal for a new uh, capital reserve fund for fire department equipment. I've asked the, uh, it's going to be Captain Cardwell, who will give you an idea of the type of equipment. You may recall a couple of years ago we had a warrant article in which we, the department was successful in receiving a grant, I think, for about $240,000 for, yeah. for breathing apparatus, and our cost was 10 percent local, which is great, but we do, can't always rely upon uh, a grant funds, so they've developed a program, and, and Doug will take you through just the types of equipment we propose that would be purchased under this, under this program. This is the type of equipment that's been cut out in the last couple of years due to budget constraints on uh, defibrillators, cots. Uh, IV pumps, that type of medical equipment, durable medical equipment we use, they've just gone through the roof in recent years. Uh, a defibrillator is a little over $30,000. Uh, so we broke it down to emergency medical equipment. The next group is fire equipment, fire hose, thermal imagers, uh, protective clothing, uh, a set of, full set of fire hose for fire trucks, a little over 15 grand with nozzles. And we look at all this equipment to be about 10 years. Uh, the next group is communications. We've been lucky along with the SCBA grant. We've had a lot of communication grants the last couple of years, but the equipment only lasts 10 years. So we're looking at a, a plan, uh, $150,000 a year, to try to continue with this before we end up 
where too much stuff is broken and we can't afford it. So. Any questions for Doug? No, I mean, it's, we've been talking about this for years on the CIP and everything. They, they, they can't run the place without the stuff. Any more questions? Okay. All right. Thanks, Doug. Any questions from the public in regards to Article 6? All right, uh, Article 8, Fire Department Staffing. Dave, you want to just yeah, This is a separate warrant article which uh, was uh, requested by the council to look at the, uh, the cost uh, impact of increasing our coverage level to 11 uh, emergency responders in the fire department per shift. Uh, there's really there's two components to this. First is all is that we, we do not actually fund replacement coverage for uh, the fire department. So of that $403,000, uh, Seventy-six thousand is to is for additional overtime or replacement costs to bring us up to ten, and uh, three hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars is the cost to add four additional fire personnel. And as the council had a discussion at the last uh, meeting, uh, uh, how that expended is depending upon what the uh, what the policy is. If we look, if if we try to establish as a policy eleven employees per shift. Then we may look at additional overtime because obviously you've got more people that are that are working. You have more chef, more shifts to fill. Uh, if you're looking at striving for 11 but maintaining 10, that softens that a little bit. Uh, not, uh, just a word about the $76,000 expenditure for overtime. Uh, the chief and his staff developed a historical review of of over the last three years as to how much we incurred for overtime for vacation, sick. Uh, on duty injury, off duty injury, and so they, they took the average of those. If we took the highest of each of those years, three years in each category, that number would be uh, uh, a good deal more than 76,000, but I took the average of those. So again, it's, it, obviously we can't guarantee there'll be 10 people on shift, but we'll be, we'll be meeting that goal uh, uh, a lot more frequently than we currently are. I have a question on that. Um, so am I right to assume from what you just said, that that seventy-six thousand dollars is not inclusive of the uh, budgeted overtime that I alluded to earlier of one hundred seventy-four five seventy-eight. That's correct. So it's uh, it's roughly two hundred and forty grand uh, in uh, yeah. what, what, overtime. When, just for clarification, Joe, what one seventy-four number are you looking at? Um, uh, Forty-one forty overtime salaries for all departments. So what I did is I looked at it for all departments first, then went into the detail of each department. Okay. But this was a high level, uh, uh, 174, 578, which was um, uh, what you added into the 2012 default budget. Right. If you're looking at what's in default in total, it does not include this number here. That's correct. Okay. This is an addition to that number. Okay. Any other questions from the Budget Committee or the Council? Please. I, I just wondered, um, does this bring us up to the national minimum standards for fire safety for the number of personnel on a shift. Are we close to that yet? Did you hear me punt? <laughs> Got <laughs> <some help> <laughs> <laughs> nope. I Yeah, a few of our previous conversations was about 15 to 16 responders, including wow. incident commander, are the national standards for us to operate on scene. Mm -hmm. So this does not bring us to that total. All right, but, but let's ask a little bit further clarifying question. NFPA looks for four on an engine, right? Yeah, Only they look one. at four or more, correct. Okay, so we run three, three, and two right now, right? Yeah, at minimum staffing of nine, we run two on every truck. So what we'd be able to do is we would, so with, with 10 hoping for 11, what's the staffing look like? It would be three on two of the engines and then two people on the other two. Okay. So we're getting closer. And, and it, this would also allow you to take out more equipment, obviously, if you have more staff to. Adding one person or the, the backfill of overtime yeah. is if I'm out sick today, there's somebody to fill my slot. It doesn't add another vehicle. Oh, okay. Okay. The, the other thing is that standard is only firefighters. It does not include um, e EMT ambulance, right? Well, all <laughs> of our employees are cross-trained dual-rolled. They all work on the ambulance. They all work on the engine. So 
It, it looks at total responders to an incident, not whether they're trained as EMS or firefighters. No, no, I'm saying the standard. Is that firefighters for firefighters? Standard? In other that, words, is, that is not, for firefighters. But I think what I'm trying to have the public understand is that it's not just firefighters there. It's an ambulance <laughs> service as well. Oh, so, absolutely, yes. So it's a, it's a dual role. When, you, when you're talking about 14 or 15, you're talking about these guys that are nationally just firefighters. I mean, and I understand they may have some other certifications, but we man those fire departments and have ambulance as well um, ready to roll. Correct. So that's, that's another data point to make sure that you realize. Correct. Yeah, so when we send someone on the scene, they, they have, um, you know, the ability to take over emergency until, until the ambulance gets there. You have someone with a skill set that can be helpful. Absolutely. So, Doug, what does it take to put two ambulances on the road? How many people? To add another ambulance? Yes. Would be another two additional people per shift. So, okay, so we would have to go from 10, 11, wishful to 13. Correct. Okay. You know, and, and as I said, pointed out earlier too, um, I think this is uh, probably when we first got our books, there may be some opportunity in revenue uh, sourcing some of the, if we did do that. <coughs> Um, I understand that Londonderry would pay for the retirement over the long run, so that's something we have to really weigh out. But there's also revenue if we um, could get ambulance services from other uh, towns, similarly to what we're looking at with dispatch. Um, you know, so that's another way of paying for it, um, and it would provide Londonderry with a, be a better service, uh, not better service, but more service. So, and more options to help defer options, right. some of the costs. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the Council of the Budget Committee? Yeah, I, I just have, have one uh, comment that may, uh, may help uh, people understand comparatively how Londonderry Fire Department compares to uh, other surrounding communities uh, like Salem, Wyndham, Derry, Concord, Bedford, and Merrimack. Um, I looked at it in terms of population, and I looked at it in terms of square miles that they have to cover. Londonderry has to cover, um, I mean, the Londonderry Fire Department has to cover 41.9 square miles compared to an average of this sample of 38 square miles. Um, when I broke down the cost per square mile across, because that's just the way I looked at it, taking the budget divided by the square miles, I mean, Londonderry, the average of the sample was $188,828 per square mile. Londonderry's cost is $142,456. Uh, dollars in terms of cost per square mile. That's just another way to look at it. Uh, cost per person, uh, the average of my sample was about $247 <coughs> per person on a population of uh, uh, 24,129. Um, in fact, that is the average. So we are right at the average of the sample and we're well below the average on a cost per square mile basis. So just another and, and data the point. The other thing, don't forget that we also have an airport. That's so correct. that was, the, you know, some we also talked about some items that are um, different, um, and that is one of them that uh, gives an additional challenge to you guys as well as the police. As far as when you're looking at miles to mile, there's going to be, you know, if there's an airport involved there, um, you know, it's it's all, it's also that that much more difficult or that many many more instances that could a call could ne could be needed for ambulance service or firefighter or police. It's a large area to cover. I think they're very cost effective in what they've done so far. So that's so what these we'll, data indicate. So when we visited the Dairy Dispatch Center, Doug and I were there with uh, everyone else. And um, we'll get into which town it was, but somebody had, there was a call, and it was a um, heart problem. And they needed to send a contract ambulance. And it was seven or eight minutes before they found the ambulance. Mm -hmm seven or eight minutes before they found the ambulance before they could dispatch it. Yeah. And what's our average time, Darren? A little per Four minutes per time of call to respond. It's just sort of an interesting data point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, uh, get some clarity on that. That's four minutes till you're on scene. Is that, that's right. That's not till we find our ambulance. That's no, four from, minutes to run. The time we received the call, the time we're unseen. Is right. They, well, my point is, is that they didn't find the ambulance for so, seven or eight minutes. So, <laughs> so if you can throw a few of the things that we talked about, everybody's been talking about, even when we talk about cable access, we talked about essential versus non-essential. Now, 
is that essential or not essential to be eight minutes or four minutes if you're having a heart attack? No, I mean, no, 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 no. I think eight it, I minutes think until the net, that means they didn't get there <laughs> right. for like 15 I'm just minutes. saying, I mean, 54, you, where are you? <laughs> you know, you're like, you're like, okay, well, you know, we want to keep the tax rate down and everybody doesn't want to spend more money, but you're getting a very, very high level of service that could possibly save your life uh, versus, uh, you know, uh, sending it out for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 minute response. So. You just got to really, I mean, it's been an eye-opening experience for me to really dig into it and uh, to realize, um, and I, I wish more people would, would, would come and uh, go forward and kind of visit you guys and um, just see what you guys do. It's been really eye-opening to see how much service we actually get. Um, and so that data point that Mr. Jonkis uh, threw out there is extremely valuable to, to, and it says a lot. One of the things to consider on your data is most of the communities that surround us run three-man companies. So they had three personnel on every engine company we were running too, so that's probably the cost difference. It's amazing you're able to cover what you do cover given the manpower you have. Well, I had a, um, three nights ago, I had a motor vehicle accident on West Road. That motor vehicle accident required every one of my companies in town. So we had to set up a landing zone for the helicopter, so I had to call in Litchfield to set that up for us, incorporate the police department to assist in that. but. Just one motor vehicle accident with one patient took my nine guys. And we also, you also have to deal with 93 coming right up through the middle of town. So 93 and just the demographics of the town. I mean, we have a lot of industry up at the north end. You know, um, we get uh, low grade and confined space rescue, you know, training with them up there all the time. That, uh, you know, I think benefits the whole community as a whole just for the personnel that we have trained. You know? Well, I don't think there's any doubt, Darren, that uh, you guys do an awful lot with less than you have for years, you know. I think what it comes down to is uh, for a long time we've tried to do less with more or more with less. And I think we've got to the point where we need to start looking outside of that and looking towards, you know, what the future is. You know, and not to mention we also have a growing older demographic in town, which is something also that hasn't been mentioned at all. <coughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but when we're older, things seem to be falling apart a little bit more. So, you know, I guess, <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess the point I'm trying to make is we have certainly, and this is my third year in the council, third budget, you know, we're, we're looking at increases in, uh, the fire department equipment and putting it into a, a reserve account, which is new. We're looking at possibly doing that with the paving. We're looking at doing that possibly with, um, you know, we basically need to look for funding mechanisms. And the funding mechanisms that we're looking at are going to be, as you saw earlier, we spent 90 minutes, as Mike Brown pointed out, on talking about cable studio money which isn't really the cable studio's money, but we can argue that till we're blue in the face and we're not going to, they're not going to hear me, you know, I can listen till I'm blue in the face and we're going to have a different opinion on it and that's just how it is. But the bottom line is we have these real expenses that are in front of us and we need to find a way to help fund them, to help lessen the burden on the taxpayers and, you know, we need to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, these are all people that are going to feel these increases, including mm -hmm. myself. I mean, in, in front of us tonight, we have the land use change tax that Council Frieda um, is going to be talking about. Uh, there's also a resident that is going to be bringing forth their own ideas of trying to get some of that money to help fund some of the costs of what we got going on here. Uh, I can tell you right now that, uh, as I'm already in public, is saying, I'm, I'm I'm on board with the wants and needs right now as far as the library goes. I, I know it's a valuable service, but, you know, I know what the needs are, and when you weigh it, <coughs> I'm going with the needs, and that's just how it is. And I know that's going to be unpopular with some people, but that's just how it is. Um, and I'm sorry, but that it's just like at home right now. My wife's unemployed, so. There's a lot of things suffering right now. So, Mr. It's, Chairman, yeah. before we get off the fire, sure. um, as we're going through this process the past two years, uh, uh, 
I'm Londonderry is going through what every other community in New Hampshire and in our country is going through. Is, is, is it within the realm of possibility that as town officials you could approach our delegation um, in Congress and point out to them that we have very worthwhile needs at the community level and we're struggling to fund even the most minimal improvements in our basic safety um, services in town. Is it, is it something that the town council could do to plead our case? We're certainly not the only ones who have that problem. Um, and it may be that um, our voices haven't been quite loud enough. Uh, my first year on the budget committee uh, and on the CIP, the first question everyone asks is, oh, what are the grant monies available? Well, you know what, those questions aren't even coming up anymore because we've all kind of lost hope. And I don't think we should lose hope, and I, and I, but I think we have to prosecute our own case in this instance. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's a legitimate well, question. I, I think we file for every grant we can possibly yeah. file for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we, we got one to build North Station. Yep. Which we were very lucky to have. I can tell you as part of the economic development group, we approached our congressional delegation on Petneyville Road multiple times. Sure. Uh, the most recent conversation <laughs> I had with Kelly A, I, started off with, John, don't ask me for any money, I'm not doing any earmarks. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's going to ask so, us to get to. <laughs> you know, well, that's what they're, so, they're, so we're going to ask somebody else. Yes. <laughs> so I, I think we've done a good job of approaching our congressional delegation, good. but more or less what we've been getting is, is we don't have any money either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And you, um, you see the struggle right now in Washington. They're all still fighting over it. Absolutely. Now, now the Republicans are going after the Democrats for, you know, passing this two-month appeasement thing so they can go, you know, it's just a, it's a constant battle. Right. So the answer and is we continue to yeah. approach them. I mean, yeah. I've been part of the meetings that we've done it. Um, so it, I, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, I guess what we did as a council is we, we basically said, all right, we agree with the fire department. We know that there's a shortfall on, on staffing and, you know, now we're at least letting it go before the voters and then the voters are going to say, well, what do you find acceptable? Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Instead of us just saying, okay, we're going to do it. Because that's not the will of the people as far as that's concerned, and let's just see what people right. want to pay for. But, but it's also not, you know, it's not the end of the world here. We're not, you know, going down to Home Depot and boarding up the library and the cable division, you know. Right. We're talking right. about, you know, some possible reductions to the library out of a $1.3 million budget. Uh, we're talking about the cable division uh, putting over $104,000 to the town budget. Uh, they have possibly lane right. uh, change it, it, tax. Right. You know, so it, it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, it, it's difficult. It requires people to make a tough decision. You know, if you didn't want to do the tough decision, you could have stayed home and watched from the other side of the, you know, the viewing <laughs> screen. Um, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is making a recommendation. It's the people who are going to say, yes, you can have four firefighters, I'll pay the cost, or no, you won't. You know, they want to make that decision fine. I, I think it's frankly <coughs> foolish, and I understand everybody's hurting. Um, I, I understand it from my work. You know, I've been to the bankruptcy court. I've seen foreclosures. You know, uh, All the time. it's not a pretty sight. So, yeah, but you're uh, doing better. There's more criminals. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, but I think we all have to, you know buckle down and make a tough decision and see what's the future. Maybe not to this year it's going to be difficult, but two years or three years from now if we break off, you know, I, I would suggest, you know, and I know Janos is going to yell at me back there, but, you know, we have to break off the cycle of borrowing to pay for repairs. It's, you know, we're paying a dollar twenty for a dollar's worth of work or, or benefit, you know. Benefit that, that just hurts us well. going down the line. And, and, you, and, and with all due respect, I know there's lots of holes in the streets and there's lots of problems in there, but, you know, we're not running on dirt roads. This isn't the uh, Old West here, you know. So we, we but, do but what I, we can I in do think for. that we have to consider that at a certain point, excuse me for interrupting yeah. you, um, that at a certain point it's, we are going to meet that point of diminishing returns. You, you can only disinvest for so many years in your own future and your children's education 
before their consequences are going to be serious. And so just like your home budget, you're going to start looking for sources of revenue. It's not, you, you can't cut your way out of the recession, and we can't cut ourselves, cut our way out of these problems. So you can't I borrow think your way to prosperity. You can't borrow, yeah, I was going to say, you can't borrow. Oh, no, come on, they say you can. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not about, it, it isn't about borrowing, but it is certainly about bringing in additional revenue. So if we could keep our eye on both sides, that'd be great. <laughs> So, hey, guys, yeah. so we'll see you at the polls. You guys are going to put together a presentation. <laughs> You'll be out front educating everybody on Article 8. Sure. I appreciate it. It, it, would, it would behoove <clears throat> you probably to do that. I appreciate you guys recognizing what we've been doing with the staff that we have. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know it's not easy. I mean, we see it. It's seen it for years, but it's up to the voters to, you know, make the decision. So, like... Councilor Farrell said it would be a great idea if you could do that. I mean, Janos does it, and I'm sure he'll be out there again. And you understand why we're doing it this way? Because if we put it in the if we put it in the budget, and it goes up against the fall. You might as well. We all might as well just stay home. Yeah. Councilor Dolan. I have a couple of general comments about the budget. Uh, just to put it in perspective, I, I think it was uh, John that asked for the the data. Uh, just came across our desk here in terms of the 10-year perspective as to what our headcount situation has been for the past 10 years um, and just so people understand that over the past 10 years we reduced in the t on the town headcount town side we reduced full-time employees by three we reduced part-time employees by two and we re reduced six full-time employees to six part-time employees so that's a and that's from 2001 <coughs> to 2011 that's a pretty significant reduction um, amid the increase in demand for services if, if we went back and looked at, especially in the public safety side, the number of police <coughs> calls, the number of uh, responses by the fire department, it's probably more than doubled in that period of time. So it's just a, it's a data point, it's a point of perspective. The other thing, Mr. Chairman, I want, uh, that was brought up uh, by a citizen was to look at, by Mike Brown, to look at the charitable uh, line item. Uh, we don't really call it the charitable line item. but Thanks, guys. Um, I think, Dave, if I remember right, historically we used to have a, uh, a public welfare department. And uh, so people understand that's not a discretionary item. That's We do have a st statutory requirement by the state that's imposed upon us by the state to provide public welfare. Um, and we found a few years ago that it was more efficient and more economical to outsource that to an agency rather than to staff it internally and as part of the headcount reduction. Uh, so, um, so some amount of that money is a trade-off, is a, is a business trade, if you will, between the the cost of internal staffing versus the cost of outsourcing. So first, so there's a two-part question. One is how much of that, of that line item do we need to retain in order to keep that level of service? Uh, uh, and then secondly, what, whatever the balance is, I would like to ask the council if we'd be willing to charge the budget committee to, to look at that and come back We've historically asked the budget committee to make recommendations to the council on, on that line item. And it's usually done every couple of years. So I think we're off cycle. Uh, is this, are we off a year now? Uh, I, don't, I don't think we are. Uh, the the uh, budget committee's looked at it every other year. Right. So, so I, I would recommend that whatever that non-welfare piece of that amount is, that we ask the budget committee to come back and make a recommendation to the council, perhaps at the next public hearing on the 12th, <coughs> to what, they, what, the, what their input would be with the thought, or considering the suggestion made by the citizen that, that uh, we reduce, or I think his language was that we get out of that business, but you know, what, what's the, given that recommendation, what's the budget committee recommend to the council? Yeah, that, that portion of the uh, general assistance budget is uh, $63,336, and it funds uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 agencies in the area which either provide direct or indirect, indirect support to citizens, and a lot of those would otherwise end up in our general assistance office, which we, like you said, we outsourced it, and now we are 
we contract with community health services who has the ability to leverage uh, our funds and other dollars. So, so considering there is a trade, there is a business trade there, perhaps you could advise the budget committee what that trade looks like and how much of that uh, account is really uh, at play sure. versus uh, crossing the line and, and then having a corresponding increase in the trade with uh, internal staffing. Yeah. And then as the budget committee to maybe make some some value judgments as to uh, with the remaining amount of money, what what do they recommend? Uh, that we that we spend it on? Do we cut it? Do we reduce it by a certain percentage? Uh, and I, I would, uh, but I would uh, ask the council if they would uh, go along with that recommendation. I've got no problem with it, but does the uh, budget committee have time to do that between now and the meeting? Mm -hmm. Between now and the twelfth. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's so little in it. I can't imagine they're going to spend a lot of time on it. You're looking at twelve thousand for family mediation through upper room. You're looking at what equates to twenty-six thousand dollars for oil assistance, which would otherwise wind up in our welfare office. There's home hospice money, Meals on Wheels. We're looking at st we, we slashed that thing pretty pretty tight over the last few years. Yeah. It's a total of I think it's, we slashed it down to sixty-three thousand. I remember my first year in the budget committee. I think we were about one hundred fifteen thousand back then. Yeah, we we, yeah, we years ago when they all came in and they all presented yeah, presented their their thing. Yeah. And last year, last, last year, year I think we dropped it. If I'm it not was wrong, eighty four. It was it down. Thir it was thir thirty five thousand for one agency alone that didn't even come in and request. And what That's what else did we? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, we'll look we'll look back and get the details. Yeah. But last year was a big step down as well. And again, you know the pressure of. Being concerned for the families in need, uh, but having to balance that well, I, with I think, I think available resources. I, you may come back and say there's no room there. Yeah. But I th it was put on the table, and I think it's it's you know worth uh, poking at. Yeah. It's going to be a long but meeting. I, of the time. I'm, a, I'm one guy, so I think no, I, have I'm, to pull the council. I'm, I agree. I'm I think fine it's with good. that. It's, yeah. it's, it's fine. Thing to take a look at it. Yeah. The budget it's committee can it. do it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anybody uh, from Does the public have any comments? Oh, sorry, John. And yeah, we just asked for some direction on what you're tasking us with. I think Mr. Brown proposed you get out of business altogether. He's put a proposal out there, and what is the task? <laughs> is it on that question? Is it everything is still in play, and we're asked to it review is, the is propriety? Of the, oh, let, me, let me just finish. The propriety, the amount of, I mean, having some parameters, especially with the limited timetable, I think would be helpful to the manager. Here's, here's what, I, what I was thinking, is that... <laughs> Uh, get input from the town manager as to what the trade is. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me to cut that money out and then have, from the statutory Go reason, have else. to go and add a full-time employee to the staff. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't make sense. So the question is, how much of that budget needs to be there to satisfy our statutory requirements? And then what's left over, <laughs> I would say, is in play. And, you know, you, then you guys can recommend leave it alone, increase it, decrease it, or spread it differently? Uh, Just speaking historically, there's going to be some speculation in that um, because I know when we had presentations last year, you had somebody like from the upper room or, you know, they couldn't necessarily allocate how many of those people were Londonderry versus Derry or surrounding communities. So some of this stuff is going to be guess guesswork. Others are going to be direct uh, fuel assistance or something <coughs> like that. You can target the numbers of people in Londonderry. So... There's going to be a lot of gray area in this. Um, you know, it would be helpful, I think, for us just to know what you, you want us to do. Actually, uh, if I may respond, John, we, this is the list that we went over last year. Um, we should be able to quickly be able to go through this real quick and just come No, I remember the that. list from last year. I'm yeah. just saying that I remember some of the testimony. <laughs> and, and while some could say how many people in London they were servicing, and we had a lot of discussions about that, others could not. So if, if those are off the table, you know, we're going to have a, a quicker work of it. If it's going through all those and, and discussing what was said last year, that's going to take a little bit longer. I think, I think we could go through this rather efficiently. And it's, I think you'd, it, you'll realize what I'm talking about when we get together. We can have that separate, have a quick discussion on it, I'm sure. I trust you. <laughs> okay. All right, um, bring it back out to the public for... The Article 8 Fire Department Staffing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I actually uh, am in favor of this article. Uh, I think it maps directly to uh, kind of the core mission of government, and that's the essential services model. Uh, the reason I brought up the charitable thing was, was I was hoping the council, not so much the budget committee, but that's your purview, that the council will consider revisiting areas that don't map to that essential services model and try to get the operating budget down to a default level. I think when you've got this kind of article out there and a budget article that's above default, I think it, it, it makes it more difficult than it needs to be for the taxpayer. So again, uh, I think this article fits what we're looking to do from, from the standpoint of, of local government and look at other areas that aren't really necessary uh, to fund at the level that they're being currently funding. And I offered that up as one area. Okay, you've talked about the cable at length. I think that's uh, an opportunity that should be pursued. The library budget is an opportunity that pr should be pursued. And any other line item outside of the essential services, uh, if there's room to bring the default, uh, bring the budget down by that 300,000 to default, and that's presented to the, to the taxpayers, I think Article 8 and anything else that's considered essential uh, is more palatable to the taxpayer. So that's what my intent was, was to try to steer the council toward areas that <coughs> really aren't needed to run the town day to day. So, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, any other residents? Okay. Article 9, Route 102, Corridor Study, Cap Reserve. Dave. This is uh, another uh, new proposal for the Council and Budget Committee's consideration to start a non-cap reserve for the Route 102 Corridor Study. And I'll ask Andre to briefly explain uh, the justification for the, the investment we're asking the town to make. I'm not sure that we nearly need another presentation. Is this going to be quick, Andre? Yes. I'll okay. Get right to the point. Have at it. <clears throat> um, uh, back in uh, 1994, the town uh, adopted a impact fee system, um, which included the fire, police, uh, parks, directs, and, and school. Subsequently, they adopted a traffic impact fee that included Route 102 and Route 28. They employed Southern Hampshire Planning Commission to put together reports and the methodology to come up with a figure to assess uh, traffic impacts on these corridors. Uh, the last, um, the last um, update to the Route 102 corridor plan was done in 2004. Um, and so by the time this gets funded, it will be about eight years since, uh, uh, since this corridor was studied and updated. And, um, and so we um, had put money in CIP, uh, I think, a couple of years ago um, that was unfunded. But this year, um, I think we initially had requested 140000 for the whole quarter from the Dairy Town Line to the Hudson Town Line along Route 102. Um, but we narrowed that scope down to just the central corridor because that's where we uh, want to focus because that's where most majority of the impact is going to take place in the near future. And then um, and with the possibility that if the obviously the um, cost of the service, service goes down, that maybe we can get a little bit more. But down to seventy-five thousand, it was to update that two thousand four plan. Okay. Yeah, uh, Andre, uh, how long, if this is funded, how long after July of one of next year will this thing be completed? Um, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, I, I would venture to guess between six, uh, be 30 and actually between 60 and 90 days, it should be able to be studied with a recommendation to the planning board um, be made with regard to the uh, impact fee. The only thing, the only thing I hesitate on is that uh, I too want to, um, we'll be moving forward with the master plan update. And if the transportation section is, of that master plan update is, is to the degree where we can utilize some of the money, not the money, that some of the, not the money, but so much the information with regard to as to the direction the community wants to go with regard to its roadway infrastructure, that I want to definitely have that information available to, in, in, to integrate into that recommendation to the uh, planning board. Will any of this be this study be made irrelevant with what goes on at Woodmont? No, matter of fact, it uh, should take into consideration what the potential would be over there. 
Thanks. I don't know. When you say it should, will that be part of the um, RFP or part of what you sp specify to the person doing the study? Yes, uh, because the last update that uh, Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission did identified uh, uh, lots of land along Route 102 or close to Route 102 that had a potential of development. And I believe the area that we're talking about had a, uh, at the time, based on the current zoning, had a redevelopment of residential uses. Now that that has expanded based on the uh, zoning, and the zoning is going to be taken a look at throughout the corridor and see what the potential, uh, uh, potential development potential is for those lots will be taken into consideration. As you suggest that is right now is, is, is very heavy and, 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 and kind of challenging that road as it is. And uh, yeah. with the onset of a, a giant project like this, I'm sure it's going to have an even bigger impact. Yeah. So. And, and also, too, um, by the time we obviously <laughs> January, July 1st rolls around, uh, who knows where we'll be at with regard to this project. Right. Um, and uh, therefore, if there's information that we can be you know, can be utilized for this project, obviously we're going to utilize it to and to get as close as we can as far as the projections are concerned. But are we duplicating the efforts that the applicant's going to have to do for studies, traffic studies on Woodmont? N not necessarily, because <coughs> they're going to be doing a, mostly the traffic assessment for their property. Where the quarter study is going to be taking a look at is all the properties that has the potential for redevelopment or development along Route 102 um, and their impact on the quarter. Uh, one thing I had. Huh? Oh, I thought he had a couple. It's three part question. Number one is is most of that seventy five going to consultants? Number two, can any of if that's the case, can any of that be done internally with engineers we have on town staff? And number three, wouldn't the applicants for the other properties in the future be like Woodmont have to do their own studies for a traffic impact at that time? So are we kind of looking at things that the other applicants will have to address in due course? Yeah, I mean uh, sorry to throw so many yeah, uh, your first question was? Was, I assume 75 is for outside consultants to come in and Correct. do that study. And yeah. it, can any of that work done? We got a bunch of bright people on staff, engineering degrees, and yourself to, that can do that without outsourcing it. Um, I, I agree with you that we have a very bright staff here. <laughs> but the disciplines that are needed is, um, <laughs> I that, was, might. that was probably the best tongue-in-cheek yeah. moment of the night. <laughs> Swing away at that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the well, discipline that, that we need on that, we're, we're hiring a traffic <laughs> consultant, a traffic engineer. That is not my main discipline, and, and nor is it the main discipline of our engineering staff here. So okay. we, we need that discipline to the table. To Are there any other disciplines that come into that study other than traffic that we can so save we, some money on? Matter of fact, we have, we, we have matter of fact, when, our tra when a traffic consultant sits down and, and to evaluate this project, they're going to be sitting with staff to look and evaluate what are the development potential, what is happening in the community <coughs> to get as much information from us to help them do their job as to um, analyzing the, 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 the present traffic as well to project the future traffic and what those that what that present and future traffic has on the um, on the uh, corridors. Just a logistical question. I mean, I think it goes back to what was asked over here. How do we even know what that is with Woodmont still being kind of in a state of flux? I mean, we're talking about what could be big variances in those numbers. Well, it gets to your point where you said, you know, aren't the uh, aren't the developers going to be submitting traffic uh, plans anyways? What we're going to be doing is is basically estimating what what the potential may be out there based on our zoning, and usually we do that on the highest and best use. We just did that in the Route 28 corridor, um, and then uh, and based on that, as new development comes in, we're going to measure what they uh, what their impact is against what we project. Most of the time, we're, we're pretty spot on, but sometimes there's a variance, and therefore, that variance is taken into consideration based on actual data, and the assessment is based on that actual data. This is a dumb question, but at the end of the day, what's this gonna, study going to answer or tell us, and how is it going to cha change where we're going? Well, what it's going to do is, uh, again, in 1994, we embarked on an impact fee system here, and what that's going to do is either uh, tell us that our impact fee system is, is working accordingly and therefore the assessments that we make on there are going to be unchanged or it's going to take a look at and say, you know what, cost of construction, cost of improvements to this quarter based on what we foresee the needs to be in the future 
are going to go up, therefore our assessment's going to go up. The, the, the impact fee assessment. Impact fee assessment, correct. And we, is there a legal requirement that we have to correlate that to what the, the impact will be? There's a rational nexus, so okay. um, as developments uh, occur on the, on the, uh, on the quarter, and, and there's a rational nexus based on the trips, uh, the new development and the trips that are going to be generating that impact, yes, then we can assess that. Um, but it has, to, it has to bear that rational nexus to the impact that they're creating. So is there potential recoupment here? You look at a situation where you come in and say Woodmont could grow this exponentially. Mm -hmm. all, the, all, the, all those user fees uh, or impact fees go up, and we're recouping that 75 over the next number of applicants? What we, we actually what we would be uh, not necessarily recouping the seventy five thousand, but we would be getting their share of their impact on the quarter um, um, through the assessment of the impact fees. So whether that's thirty percent, forty percent, or fifty percent share, being that is uh, uh, based on the existing traffic, the town or the uh, the public bears fifty percent of the cost. But the there's based on the new projected uh, development that could occur on this quarter. Then that's going to be that could be bared by the private sector through the assessment of the impact fee. Okay. So this is a way to kind of update the assessment of impact fees, really. Correct. That's and what it's it, to what legitimize it, is. it. You can't just say, "Well, yeah, I feel like going up on the impact fees because of whatever reason." Well, now we have a sound methodology. They stress, and they've done the uh, done the study. This is a way to actually impact that number. Correct. <clears throat> Mrs. Chair. Um, this looks like one of those articles that would be really tempting to just skate past and not uh, pay too much attention to, but um, I'm very aware of uh, the pressures that will be coming to London Dairy between the 93 expansion and the development at the north end of town, the new access road up there. So I, I would really encourage the voters to think about this very seriously. It has been a long time since this has been updated. Um, Woodmont is going to be bringing tremendous pressure at that exit four area, and we need to be sure that we're prepared uh, as we get ready to develop further up 102, that we really have our ducks in order and we know what is going to be benefiting the community, rather than go ahead with development that we haven't thought out mm -hmm. and then have to go back and make corrections later. I think this is a great way to prepare us for the next phase of that yeah. run, Route 102. And I, w I wish I could take credit for this, but the town has thought about this way ahead of, uh, way ahead of me. So um, again, this is a system that's been in place since 1994, and uh, and we're just trying to keep up with the um, with the with the work that needs to be done to keep it going into the future. Thank you, Chairman. Just a, just a real quick question for you, Andre. 102 is a state is a state road. Is there any Correct. contribution expected from the state? <laughs> That's almost a, it depends. Um, you know, having done this, once we do the study again, we can always uh, identify what the uh, needs of the corridor are and then, and, and then petition through our, reach, our Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is Southern Hanson Planning Commission and the people that sit on that, to try to get that on the 10 year plan to get funded and updated. And uh, if that happens, then uh, obviously, um, uh, and, and the state does it, then we can do away with this and have the state upgrade, update their, um, the corridor. But on the other hand, uh, if we're successful in getting at least the, the private share, then we can use that private share, and we're if, uh, much like uh, we did on Route 28, where we got a grant for a, um, the upgrade of Page Road and Route 28. Uh, we can use, we pay for that by the force of impact fees, which we collect collective towards that, towards that impact anyways, against the uh, a grant, and we're able to pay for that with limited impact from the, um, from the taxpayer. Um, just a quick question, Andre. There's been some scuttlebutt in town, and I, you know, so we can address it on something we're supposed <laughs> to spend the money on. There was a rumor going around town that impact fees may be subject to challenge if they're made on a state highway. Mm -hmm. is it, can you just educate us on that? Is that, is there some validity <laughs> or is that just a red herring that people are throwing around? Yeah. I, I no, know it's I'm a question for the town manager. Okay, Wh whomever, but I'd heard that, you know, people throwing that around lately and I, I, I frankly don't know what the answer is, so. Yeah, we, you know, there's been a lot of uh, varying opinions of what's a lot of impact fees, so we met with our town, town attorney last month who 
essentially set it straight, uh, one area we should take a look at is the composition of the various factors in our state highway impact fees. Essentially the rule of thumb is that uh, it, it, it's not confirmed that we can assess a fee for the roadway, but as far as the intersection improvements, that would be, that would be an eligible and appropriate expense for our impact fees. So Andre is currently looking back at the past studies and, and uh, making some recommendations as to how those should be adjusted to better reflect mm -hmm. the guidance we received from town council. Well, that was the question I was going to ask you. If it's somebody sitting on a corner, whether it, the impact can concern the cross street rather than the highway. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's so correct. So the only, the only question mark may be those properties that are wholly on a, a state highway. Well, well it, it's, it's not so much the front of the state highway, it's, 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 the, it's the allocation of costs for the stretch of state highway between intersections. Okay. Because if you developed on a, on a straightaway, you still may have some impact on the intersections up and down, uh, you know, either side of you. So, but that's, uh, that's an area which Andre's looking at with his staff to make the appropriate recommendations that apply anywhere for, for revisions. So we've kind of built the contingency in, so if there is any kind of change in where we're going with this, we, we've accounted for it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And you're taking into consideration in a new study. Okay. okay. Any public comment for Article 9, Route 102 corridor study cap? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just as I'm requesting the Council to consider finding ways in the operating budget to get us to default. I'd ask in the similar vein that we try not to put anything else on the warrant that we really don't need to. And even though it's small money, the cup of coffee argument can be made very easily. We know how many cups we're up to at this point. I think this is an article that we can go without given the situation that we're in. Uh, there's two new articles this year, uh, as Dave's explained. One is for the, the new capital reserve for the fire equipment that fits the core mission of town government. I think this is one that we should save the 45000 and uh, hopefully add that to what you're going to reduce from the operating budget. So I'm not in favor of this one. I think it's too much. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Go ahead. Yes. Um, when, when Woodmont comes to town, <coughs> there'll be several thousand more people driving around looking for coffee, and I think we should get ready for them. Okay, thanks. Uh, one thing coming from my point of view is uh, I'm, I tend to agree with, uh, with Mike that this might be uh, something that we might forego this year and maybe consider next year, but that'll be up to uh, the board, but that's just something to consider. Any other questions from the uh, uh, community? No? Okay. Uh, one quick thing before we go to Article 10. Uh, Council Dolan just wanted to remind people, uh, for the two weeks after Christmas and New Year's, the trash pickup will be delayed one day. So if you are picked up on Monday, you will be picked up till Tuesday, and that goes accordingly. So your, whatever your day is, bump it out one day, and that, that'll be what your pickup day will be. So just... Uh, I wanted to remind everybody. Thank you to Council Dolan. Okay, moving on. Um, Article <coughs> 10, land use change tax allocation. Dave? Yeah, we're, we are anticipating a petition warrant article. We've not yet received one. Uh, but we do know that the, the subject will be whether to continue to dedicate 100% of the land use change tax to the conservation fund or to uh, somehow split that between the conservation fund and the general fund. Okay. And uh, I, I was told today by one of the petitioners that the petition should be delivered to town hall uh, in the immediate near future, well before the January 10th deadline. Okay. Any uh, questions from the council? Uh, I, I proposed one too. It differs from uh, right from that, and that has a, a flat number instead of a, mm -hmm. a varying number. Um, which, you know, at the outset is $10,000. And what I'd like to say about it is, is I think we need to consider the, uh, uh, the change in the allocation of land use change tax for a number of reasons. Uh, one is which is the, uh, the Woodmont and, and its, its change, which will be providing a very large amount of money to the town. 
Um, but secondly, uh, and frankly more importantly, is the uh, Open Space Task Force report we just got. If you look at the one they have just issued versus the one, the previous one, they uh, were looking to have, I think, 25 percent as minimum of the town protected uh, under conservation. They, they now currently have 31 and a half percent. So they've exceeded their plans bless from, the, bless you, from the prior report. Uh, the new report changes the uh, standard to a different number. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know what, what the reason is for the change, but uh, I, I think at a minimum we can say that the plan by their own admission has been achieved. And I think it's now time to start looking towards returning these funds to the general fund. To move that we close the public hearing. Okay. We got a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, well, it's affirmative. Five zero. All right. Okay, you have everything you, you actually have. You have everything you need, Dave? Well, what I would what I would like huh? is oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey. A couple of things is, is let's fast forward to the 28th for a minute. December 28th is dedicated to school season budgets. You have a bond hearing. You have to finalize your warrant, which is essentially what you've seen today, plus Tom's proposal on current use tax came in after it was posted. You have to discuss that. You also have to look at the uh, collective bargaining agreements, which we have three, we believe. We have two, which is approved at the council, and one on, on, uh, on the warrant on the agenda for tonight, uh, LAEA, the Town Administrative Personnel. And so the goal of the 28th is to come out, of, come out of that meeting with a recommended budget for the final public hearing. The only missing piece is any petition warrant articles received by January 10th. So, Dave, what do you need tonight? So tonight what I need hopefully is, is some, some further direction as to what's the target operating budget the council would like me to work on and different areas. For example, John raised the issue of $200,000. Uh, uh, also, I've heard about priorities of being overtime, funding overtime and gas, any kind of input I can receive so I can sort of economize the council's time for December 28th to give you different options to look at. Dave, aren't you, aren't you looking at, um, or wasn't it also mentioned that we would need another article in case article number two doesn't go through with the bond issue? Well, right. I mean, the, the other issue is I think it provided the council with additional information, so you need to tell me whether you need more information on that issue. I think you have, I think you have information on that which would allow you folks to make a policy decision on that, but if you don't, let me know. Developing a warrant article, that's very easy. It's going to be no, a capital reserve fund. I meant, say, for instance, that this bond issue fails. Can we have another one that says um, if, if this article number two fails, then we would like to do, we would like you to vote on whether or not you want to that, fund That's charge. an option which you have, which has been confirmed by so, DRA. So we have to make that decision pretty soon, too, right? 28th. Okay. 28th. So just keep that in the back of your mind, right. because obviously we... Right. So I think the the operating budget number that we're asking you to, that I brought up, and I don't know if everybody else agrees with it, is $26,598,867 is what I think would be 200000 over default. So, so you need that tonight? Well, I don't need it legally tonight, but it will help us prepare for the 28th meeting. We'll hopefully, we'll economize your time. So you just need a preparation number. Right. Exactly. Because, al because although, that, although we talked about earlier, I talked about the areas that would get up to 300000 you know, we've also talked about items that were um, underneath default that were possibly uh, over budgeted from last year that we could bring that $300,000 that I indicated or $200,000 that John indicated to be under default. So I think that's, I know I'm throwing a lot of curveballs in, but are we actually, are we actually, if you, if you take the, the, the library, if you take the, um, um, you know, the cable access and you take XYZ ABC, are you at, a few under the fault even now. So if you'll, I'm going to pass the gavel to Joe. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking instead of saving it for the end. After looking through this agonizingly, I think where I'm at is default and minus whatever you can without losing any people. And here's my reasoning. 
if we hope to pass some of the articles on the on election day I think that we should give the residents the best and what I mean is the best budget we can in hopes of achieving a better staffing for the fire department and funding the um, the special revenue accounts. So I think in order to do that, I think if we could <coughs> come in somewhere under default, again, without losing any staffing, I would be more comfortable with that. The only problem I see with that is is that we're going to have to put a fictitious number in for overtime then to get below default. Well, not necessarily, yeah. and the reason I say that is one of my proposed cuts is looking at library. I understand, but we have under budgeted in overtime historically mm -hmm. by hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I think that if we put in what's the real number and then you want to try to get below default, fine. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do with the $200,000 over. Let, what's the real number? Let's not let's let's stop kidding ourselves right. because if if the real number is six hundred thousand dollars, and you know and we put in four hundred and we say hey, that's great we're below default, okay. okay? Or is the answer that we have to cut people to get below default? And not, and, and not to throw Mr. Junkins under the bus, but he just sets a number of three hundred thousand dollars with the library as an example. Now don't fall off your chair of people that are, you know, uh, uh, still still up and and and, talk, and thinking about the library, but maybe if that number is close to it. 100 or 200 even say 200 for it just 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 to talk 200 plus another hundred and the cable that's 370 on the if it, you guys come back and say yeah you know um charity's at home this year you know um so that's 370 you know and as you look at these items that maybe um you could find even more things uh that were um we could save on from last year's budget um and that's how you get to pay for john the gas and the overtime um and that's why I thought it was really important to kind of like be able to say, hey, you know what, with these savings, you can then identify that money and earmark that money to go towards over time and earmark that money to go towards uh, these other items like gasoline that we were talking about. So if, I, if you take another 100 of that cable, you're going to be down to one person in the cable department. Yeah. No, no, no. No, I think he's saying the 100. The 100, the 100, because right now we're thousand. That's already in there. That's already in there? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's in the we, well, we were actually, it's in revenue. It's in the revenue. Last year, last year we were three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars over and over budget. Time. It's in the revenue. I think the I'm rub. Trying to be a jerk. <coughs> we got to deal with it. <sighs> I think the rub that you you're going to keep going up against is, we, sooner or later, we have to face the reality that things cost what they cost. If we want the services we have in this town, it costs money. To artificially try to get below some number because we want to, you know. Because we think that that's what they're going to vote for, I think um, uh, Councillor Farrell has a valid point. And look, let's let's face reality. Put in there what what it should be, whatever that is. Make an argument. Put it to the voters, and it is what it is. Um, and if you, you don't know, put it to the voters, then fine. Then we have to make some hard cuts, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not simple anymore. It's people. You got to cut personnel if you want to really get the blow default and hold it there. You can't cut any more people. We've done this exactly. game. We've done this game for I can't even tell you how long. But we can't keep saying we're going to do overtime and it's three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars more than what we budgeted for. So we're, point. We're, we're you know we're we're, we're playing a budgeting game. It's, it's unrealistic, is what it really turns yeah. out to be. I mean, doesn't it make sense to? Why? To here's my point. Every year we ha sorry, Tom. Every year we have this damn debate, but nobody, everybody challenges us to cut and do everything we can to, to maintain services without cutting our special interests. But the other side of the pocket spends what they want and nobody says a word. It's because they come in below default every day. It's a bogus number. It's still a goddamn increase. It's because they fit, they've been doing this for 10 years and have figured it out. We're in year one. <laughs> they have to be in year one at some point, too. Right? If we if we want to if we're going to put a fictitious number in for for the numbers, fine. Let's understand that's what we did. 
I, I guess my, my thought is um, that we put in, well, to use somebody else's terminology, maybe Tom, you know, we put in what, what it takes to run the, what we believe it takes to run the government. And then we have a new, we have a new process this year. We have a deliberative session. So if, if the voters come to the del deliberative session and believe that it needs to be less to go on the ballot, then they'll make it less. I mean, at that point, it's their, it becomes their number. And if we say, listen, we, we just told you what we think it's going to take to run the town. If you want something less than that, then by all means, do it. But I think if we come with a number that's not what it takes to run the town, and we lead people to believe that we can do it for that, then I think we run the risk of misleading them at the, at the deliberative session. So I, I, would, I would say, I mean, you're right. I think we should scrub it and wire brush it uh, and so there's no fat in it. But on the other hand, if we understate the budget, then the deliberative session is they're starting off with, with, a, with a number that's not real. Agreed. That's the only reason I'm at the 200,000. We can still slash the 200,000, but let's find out what the real, if the real, you know, there's not $70,000 in the, in the charitable. 63, you know, there's 63, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. and, and 45 of it were offsetting welfare. I mean, come on. I, we've played this nickel and dime game for years. With $325,000 over on overtime, that's pretty bad budgeting. <laughs> but it get paid for somewhere. It was a bottom line budget, so where did it come from? Exactly. Well, it, it did come from somewhere. Let, let me give you an example: is the is the fire department small equipment capital fund? Those those are requests from the fire department, and when you got to cover overtime, you don't replace that equipment on a timely basis. Uh -huh. Things uh -huh. like that throughout the budget. Uh, I, I have a question. I hate to throw, uh, you know, water on the uh, flame here, but uh, since we're talking about trying to be realistic with budgeting, um, this is an expenditure number, but a revenue number. Interest investments are in. $36,000 in 2011. You, you budgeted, I think, 250000 that year. You budgeted again 250000 in 2012. Um, it's Santa Claus time, yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I, I don't think interest rates have taken a huge leap in the last few years. So the only other way you're getting the money up is if you've got a whole bunch of more money in the undesignated fund balances. We're down, we're down that estimate to 150 now, whereby we realistically collected about $700,000 six years ago. And I was going to ask you if I what could we're get to do my is, gasoline there, too. What we're trying to do is project the interest rates, uh, you know, between 9 and 24 months ahead of where we are. And so we've been trying to balance and get that number down to a realistic number. That's what we've been doing. So, uh, but uh, what I'm asking is, is 150 realistic? I mean, if, you, if your actual is in 2011 to 36. Well, looking, looking at today's rates, no, it's not. Okay. But what it's projected to possibly be, it might be. But, you know, 150 is a lot closer than 350 we had a couple of years ago. Right. Um, so it's another fictitious number. Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, it is. You know, it doesn't affect the, the Article 4, but it affects reality, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know we've, we've, been, uh, we've been short on motor vehicle permit fees, but we keep all the industry standards are telling us that there's a pent-up demand for vehicles because people haven't been trading their vehicles. We haven't seen that yet. We expect to see it soon. We ratcheted down our estimate, I believe, from last year. Uh, was it two years ago we ratcheted down and put this one back up again? It's just it's an estimate of what we think the economy is going to do between 9 and 24 months out. So... Now I'm up to 425,000, and you know, and th that's fictitious. I, th that's bodies. And your highway Four. block grant number is down 81,000 <laughs> in revenue. Put you know, highway block grants be between 2012 and 2013. That's your estimated revenue. What's the number on that now? Uh, 525. It's 82,000 uh, 80, 82, less than what you budgeted in 2012. No, because that, that hasn't been completed. We're, we've been on track with that. But next, the FY13 the FY, uh, number is now 506. We received that from the state last week. It was originally supposed to be 606. If, uh, if you folks recall, you used to, play, you used to pay a $30 surcharge to the state for the registry motor vehicle. Mm. Right. And the legislature eliminated that. So we received this uh, last week that our share will be 506 for FY13. So that one will be adjusted because we know what the number is. They, they give us a number. They do adjust it somewhat. 
uh, we go through the fiscal year, it doesn't vary that much, but their beginning of the fiscal year estimate is, is pretty accurate. And we lost $100,000 on that one last week. <laughs> so Thanks, Dave. So we're down 500 k <laughs> oh, right? yeah, So John, where do you guys want to start? Yeah, but John, he didn't, he didn't give you the number on the, uh, on the motor vehicle permit fee. Yeah, we're up a little on that. Yeah. So all I'm saying to you yeah. is, is that we, we can right. definitely give Dave direction no, by department where to cut personnel. You know, you can say, Dave, at least one out of public works. <laughs> no, but we can actually, you know, I'm just kidding around with that stuff, okay? But we'd have to go down and say, okay, Dave, we want, we want this all in personnel, and we want it out of the, anything but the big three departments. And then he's got to go find it. I mean, we're allowed to give him that kind of direction, but we have to know what real numbers are. And if we, if we run real numbers on this thing, we're yeah. talking about letting people go. Oh, uh, That's where you're going to be below default, because then, because then we got to scrub them down to be real. Oh, I, I just don't think it's realistic to be below default. Well, I'm starting to get that impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying don't keep beating on it. Yeah, as uh, much as we're trying to push yeah, it, it's, you know, we just got to keep questioning what up, you know, what could bring <coughs> it, bring it up, you know. Well, firstly, I would like to apologize for swearing or cussing. It was budget. What does the ballot look like? Uh, town council as amended would be the same number as the fall budget. So, the, so they'll have a choice of voting on the same number. Either one wins, right? So, Dave, uh, you've already figured that default is no jobs. If you go below default, you're looking at positions. Well, the what we've done with with uh, default is that it's twenty six three ninety eight, and of that default money, we've identified ninety six thousand dollars, which although it's carried from default under the law, is no longer need to be expended. And so we funded the gasoline of 72.4 and put 24,000 towards police department overtime. So, so, you're, so your magic numbers are just not working so, anymore. So what the fault, <laughs> so essentially what the fault is, is the same level of services to the community. Yep. Uptick by our contractual obligations. Right. In, in labor, debt service, solid waste. Okay. What it is. With a little caveat of the gas. So, that you just said, right? All right, so I'm, I'm not okay with going below default. So um, default is the number uh, I would like to try to get to. And with that said, I think on the table is, you know, my reductions that I would like to look at as one counselor, and that would be coming from uh, the 200000 from the library and whatever else you can do to try to get us to a reasonable number not too far over the default budget and that you know and i, I realize that like john says funding the overtime is one of the things you're going to have to do when you take the money from the library you're talking about funding the things that john just talked and i just talked about right then so be it it's so got to it's got to come from somewhere it's it's i'm not okay with just saying you know raise taxes it goes against every ounce of my being, just as arbitrarily as one person up here. So go so ahead and raise it. So to translate that into a motion, would that be twenty six four ninety eight eight sixty seven? Is that what you're saying? Two hundred thousand lower than twenty six five in front of us. Twenty six three ninety eight. No, yeah. it's two hundred thousand off, right? Yeah, yeah. That's fall. From default. Over. Twenty six five ninety eight. Two hundred thousand over. I thought you meant two hundred thousand down from where we are now. Mm. Well, maybe that is down. I just need direction. I don't need a motion. Let me suggest this, is that based upon what I've heard, some councils and what their priorities may be and which ones are not from going over the fault, mm -hmm. I'll simply reproduce this spreadsheet which shows if we had $10 over the fault, I'd spend it on X, $1,000. I'll bring that all the way up to $200,000. And then on the 28th, if you decide to fund the budget at, at the fall plus 175, then you'll have a sense of what our recommendations are to spend that additional hundred seventy-five thousand dollars on. So you can essentially set any level you want, with the caveat that you're going to um, reduce the the library by two hundred according. Well, to well, here's the. Uh, in, in fact, let me rework the thing. But to three hundred. That has to be a policy decision from the council. That's just my suggestion. Yeah. Let me let me rework the numbers from for default plus three hundred under this under this premise. If the council decides to reduce the library by $100,000, then essentially you know you're going to have $100,000 out of the operating budget, 
So your default is 26,398 plus 100. That's the equivalent of your old default. You follow? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. you can you can as a policy decision on the 28th, you can pick whatever level you want to pick at, but at least you'll know what staff recommends to spend any dollars over the falls, right. which are either additional tax dollars or substituting for what used to be in a library or any other department. So you made an example of a default plus 172. In that situation, if we said, yeah, 100 from the library, it would be default plus 72, right? It would be default plus 272, actually, yeah, because 272. you're taking 100,000 from the default appropriation and adding it to the top. So, I mean, I think if I present it that way, you'll know what staff is thinking where the money ought to go is based upon the input received from the council. And then you, you gentlemen can figure out what the ultimate level you feel comfortable presenting to the deliberative session. I lost you on that again. I'm sorry. I, yeah. So default is? Right now you've got a default budget. It includes the library the way it is. Yeah, and I don't want to pick on the library. But I'm you, just, we're just using yeah, okay. that. I'm sorry. Use an example. That. You've got a default budget, which includes the library default budget. Yep. Okay. If you make a policy decision, you're going to fund the library at default less 100000 yep. for that department then essentially by going above the overall default budget you're looking at up 100,000 you're spending the same amount of money because what you're looking at is default minus 100,000 from the library plus 100,000 from others so you're replacing the library expense with other expenses okay so if you're at this level and you want to reduce the library it brings it down to here your authorized level is right here see, see I looked at it like just to use round numbers I looked at it default uh, if we we spent if we throw that three hundred thousand dollars that we were two hundred thousand dollars say two hundred thousand dollars that John was talking about yep. so it won't be confusing with gasoline and overtime so that's default but so if we took a hundred thousand from the library we could spend another hundred thousand dollars on those other items that we think are underfunded that's correct okay yeah Just whatever you I'm reduce gonna, from the default the is still going to say two hundred thousand dollars whatever you reduce from the default in in terms of current services. You can add above the fault and have a have a neutral tax rate for your, tax for your budget, but not for the, for your um, where you're going to spend it, but not for the operating budget. It's still going to say two hundred thousand going to the polls. It now if you go above two hundred, okay, under the current default budget, and then you make a decision to cut the library a hundred thousand, you're 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 net raising a hundred thousand over the fault. So the number going to the voters would be default mm -hmm. the original default number plus a hundred thousand. So let's see what that all looks like. I'm going to make another decision. Right. When, when, I'm sure when I'm looking at it, it'll make sense. Yeah, visually, it's a lot easier to, to explain. You've it probably been is. up since 5. It's now 11.30. So, yeah, your brain's probably not at the Fred, optimum Fred, right now, picking it up. some coffee. You know I'm not. Okay. So, Dave, are you okay? I'm good. You've got an idea? I do. All right. Uh, we have no old business. We have new business. Anybody care to take that up at 11.25? <laughs> Resolution 2011-20 relative to an agreement with Granite Ridge Energy. <coughs> I can read that one. Joe, you still get the gavel, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, I will read that. First reading is tonight, hopefully adopting it tonight, whereas... Well, actually, he's out my reading glasses. It is in the town's and GRE's best in interest to enter into an agreement which provides a predictable tax payment for GRE and income stream to the town. Whereas it is also in the both the town's and GRE's best interest to ensure that the assessment of the property on the property is reflective of fair market value, and whereas for the reasons stated above, it is common practice for the for a municipality and large taxpayers to enter into assessment agreements. Now therefore be resolved by the Lunary Town Council that the town manager is hereby authorized to execute the tax assessment agreement between Granite Ridge Energy and the town of Lunary for the years 2011 to 2013. So moved. Second. We have a uh, motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of resolution 2011 20 signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, that's uh, chair votes affirmative. That's 5 0. Resolution yeah. passes. Yeah, I, th I think it, Mr. Chairman, I think it would make uh, sense just to talk a little bit of the detail behind that. Just a, like I said, a little bit, emphasizing a little bit. And that is what would what it will be the collected taxes uh, that this ag agreement will uh, will be for in, yeah, in, in the next just year. Again, uh, very briefly, it, it's always in the town town's best interest to uh, understand and rely upon its major revenue sources, and it's also in the best interest of our largest property taxpayer who. 
whose assessment is now over 10 percent of the overall town assessment. Uh, it's a significant taxpayer. So the proposal is to, or we just voted on by the council, was to enter the three-year agreement. The current year we're in, we're in next year in, to, in calendar year 2013, which represents an increase in assessment from the 2010, last year's assessment, of $10 million. Next year will increase an, an additional $30 million, and the year after, an additional $40 million. So looking at 2010, the assessment on the plant was $350 million. That will increase to $430 million uh, by 2013, which is uh, roughly about, at, in 2013, should be between 12 and 14% of our total tax base. So w what that means in terms of dollars, I believe, is that for the tax year 2011, the power plant will be paying around six and a half million dollars worth of taxes. That's correct. Just as a note that the statewide property tax is paid directly to the state for power plants on the state law. Right. Thank you, Tom. Good point pointing that out. Okay. Um, Proposed collective bargaining agreement with AFSCME LAEA, Town Administrative Personnel. Dave, do you want to just give us the uh, flyover? Yeah, well, this is, this is a, almost, although it's a different uh, collective bargaining agreement, it's almost the same agreement as the council approved at the last meeting with LEA public safety personnel. Uh, a three-year agreement with cost living adjustments of 0% for this coming year, 2% for uh, FY13 and 2% FY14. The merit increase levels have been reduced similar to the other LAEA agreement. Uh, we've had the language in there so that the town does not receive a supplemental assessment for any excess payouts upon separation. And also the group has agreed to reduce the amount of sick leave payable on separation. Essentially at the highest level it goes from 60 days to 30 days. So it mirrors it mirrors what the rest of our units have agreed to both this year and the previous years. Just Dave, I'm not in the habit of correcting you in public, but just so the minutes are right. You had you were off by one fiscal year. It's 0% increase in FY13, 2% in 14. Thank you. 15. you were, That's correct. You were off one yep. year. So, so this, uh, this contract truly has a zero tax impact for FY13. Uh, the reason it's proposed it's for approval is that town meeting has approved the projected cost over the life of the contract. So it's estimated the cost will be uh, 17000 in FY14 and about 17600 in FY15. Nice job. Outstanding job. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the employees recognized the, the current economic conditions and were very cooperative during our negotiations. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, so do you need us to take position tonight? Uh, we do, so I can put it in the uh, in the warrant for your consideration. Sure. No uh, problem with the public hearing. I make a motion that we accept the uh, agreement as bargained. Second. Motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay, that's it for new business. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, motion as, uh, as prepared in our packet second. for approval. And we get a motion and a second. All those, uh, discussion. And that's for all three sets, by the way. Thank you. All right, no discussion. I actually looked them over. It looked fine. Uh, all those, <laughs> it is getting late. I'm getting punchy. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So all those chair, opposed, motion cap passes 5-0. Mr. Chairman, given the time of the evening, I suggest we dispense with the liaison and town manager reports. Uh, there's no problem with that. Council okay with it? Fine with that. All right. Um, Tom, we probably want to do these, right? This is the board committee reappointments. We might as well get rid of that. I make a motion uh, that we accept the resignation and reappointments of the following individuals. Resignation of David Kelly from the Solid Waste and Environmental Committee. Resignation of Mark Oswald from the Conservation Commission. And the reappointment of Paul Nickerson to the Conservation Commission. Three-year term to expire 12-31-14. Okay, I got when a motion in a second. Who is the second? Is I'll January, second. Is January right. 12th or Thursday? I can second. Yeah, okay. I won't be here. Okay. All those. Uh, Unless I can catch an early flight. All right. We have a motion on the floor in a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion to the resignation of David Kelly 
Resignation of Mark Oswald and the reappointment of Paul Nickerson signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Chair votes affirmative, 5 0. Motion to adjourn. Motion is on the table. Second. Oh, you, you gotta, yeah, you gotta comment on that. Go ahead, Reed. You didn't make the motion to adjourn yet, did you? I did. No, we did. Okay. Okay. No, no, no one seconded okay, that. Okay, I, I talked to the school board at their last meeting and tell them that I would not be able to be talking to them again about trying to get people to two deliberative sessions in one week. Now, I'm every time I get up and talk to people to try and get to a deliberative session, but the next one's always, the town meeting's always in the next month, so I don't have to, um, they have a little breathing room. This time they have to go to two deliberative sessions in one week, which they've never had to do. And what we'd like to see is more people at each deliberative session. Now you, have you got a thought as to how to do that? You got me on that one, 11.30 at night, kid. I'll have to, I'll have to give it some thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and be back on the 28th. Uh, I'll be leaving the next day for a month, so um, I do want to try and I'll be back in time for the deliberative sessions, but I do want you all and the school board to talk about, talk it up to the people, because that's important. Agreed. It's their town. Agreed. It's their town. And it's the only time that their voice really has any impact. I mean, I get 16 calls, you get some calls, and you get, what do you, what do you call it, emails and mm -hmm. stuff. but. Um, They've got to be there in person. Agreed. Oh. Okay. That's I'll second it. the motion on the floor. Okay, motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, chair votes affirmative. We're now adjourned. Aye.